Earl Bruce limbering up on the sidelines like he may be ready to kick off. <laughs> After watching him yesterday at the Agonis Luncheon, though, Earl is ready to do about anything. I mean, he wants those Buckeyes to come out and wham, wham, wham. And he put on quite a show, didn't he? Yes, he did. He's a very demonstrative individual. He just about demonstrated <laughs> himself right off the stage. That's but, true. Uh, be that as it may. Uh, we are ready to go now. Ohio State, the home team, red jerseys, gray trousers, Illinois, white jerseys, black trousers, trimmed in orange. Halloween outfit, it looks like, doesn't it? It does indeed. <laughs> Very colorful. This is what they say, the 69th meeting of these teams, Mark? 69. Ohio's won 45, Illinois's won 19, and there's been four ties. But Ohio State has won the last 12, and... In the last three games, Marv, they've outscored them, or the last eight meetings, they've outscored Illinois 311 to 41. They uh, won last year, of course, 44 to 7 over there, and they won 45 to 7 here two years ago. The last time Illinois won, though, was right here in Ohio Stadium, and that was uh, 1967. It was 1713. So we'll see what's in store for the Buckeyes today. Bob Eighth of Ohio State prepares to kick off as Illinois sends three deep men, Dentino, Martin, and Miles. Martin standing at about the goal line. Eighth kicks it for Ohio State. The game is on. A deep one carrying nine yards deep in the end zone. His touchdown, and the Illini will get a touchback. First and ten at the orange and blue 20. Before they get this one going, let's take a look at today's officials. Uh, the referee is Otho Courts. The umpire is uh, Dan Davey. The head linesman is Richie Weiler. The line judge is L.T. Bonner. The field judge is Larry Nemers. And the back judge is Chet DiStefano. Illinois in a split back formation. Nico Perez and Thomas. There is Curtis in motion to the left. A quick handoff. Fumble in the back. Field. Wilson pounces on it back at the 15. That ball, Marv, was intended for the fullback, Cal Thomas, but the handoff was never there, and Al Washington quickly went in and uh, covered uh, Wilson as he got the football. The Ohio State defensive line will set you quickly. Uh, we mentioned Keith Ferguson, the outside linebacker, 65. The other one is Al Washington, 15. The inside linebackers, Glenn Cobb and Marcus Merrick. The three men up front, uh, Chris Ream, 93, the nose guard, Mark Sullivan, 97, and Jerome Foster, 55. There now are three wide receivers out for the Illini. Wilson on a draw play, keeps it, runs out around the end of the 10 to the 15, tackled at the 17-yard line by Ream and by Sullivan. Wilson faked to Thomas going inside and then rolled out around the right end. The defensive uh, secondary for the Buckeyes has got a change in it. Rover back Todd Bell, I don't think, is starting. I'm sure he's not. He has an injury. Rod Gorley, 16, is in his position. Bobby Murphy switches to safety, and the cornerbacks are Vince Skillings and Ray Ellis. It's third down and 13 for the Illini. Three-man line for Ohio State. The linebackers are to the outside, so it looks like a five-man front. Here's the first pass of the game. Wilson to throw over the middle. Caught by Curtis. Curtis has good yardage all the way down to the Illinois 39. First and 10 Illini. Marcus Merrick makes the tackle for Ohio State. Well, that was just a little uh, dumper to the uh, man coming out of the backfield, and that was the first pass after two uh, aborted running plays, really, and uh, it's just the one that uh, David Wilson likes to hit, and he does get the first down clear out to the 39. Those really hurt you when you're it's third and 13 and the opponent hits the big gainer. There's Thomas on a draw play up the middle gets yardage to the 46. He is upset by Marcus Merrick number 36 of Ohio State and John Epitropoulos number 33. That was the play that they tried to run in the very first uh, series and uh, the handoff never made connections that time it did and the Buckeyes obviously are sitting back waiting on the pass. Second and three, a gain of seven at the Illini 46. Wilson shifts his back. Rolls to the right to throw, throws it upfield. It is complete at about the Ohio, or the, yeah, the Buckeye 46. Then Skillings makes the tackle. Greg Gentino is the receiver. First down, Illini. Watch Dentino here on the isolation camera. He's uh, caught 31. This is his 32nd grab of the season. 
He's the favorite receiver, and Vince Skillings wraps him up, but it's another first down at the Buckeye 45. Wilson on a draw play to Curtis. Curtis on a slant gets it to the 43 or 4. Mark Sullivan and Chris Ream are there to get him. Ball is blown dead at the 44, so it is second and eight. Another look at it from our ground camera there, and he uh, had short yardage. It's a barely two yards, and the Buckeyes swarmed him. Second down and eight at the Buckeye 44. David Wilson shifts his backs. Curtis right, Thomas left. Wilson to pass, rushes on. Ferguson throws him down. Fumble picked up by Ohio State. Flag is down. Skillings goes the distance, and of course will not count. They'll blow it dead. No, oh, but was Jerome Foster ever in there all over him? And look where Vince Skillings is. He's in the end zone with the football. But it is the Buckeye ball, and there's your big turnover. We'll have another look at it here now. Watch him come in, number 55, right over the top, or number 65, I'm sorry, Keith Ferguson. Boy, does he wrestle into the ground. And there's the ball loose, and uh, Vince Skillings picks it up. It's a bit of Illinois 43. That's the second Illini fumble today, the first time the Buckeyes have recovered. Of course, it's the first time Ohio has had the ball. Sleister to Murray. Murray hits a stone wall at the 42. Calvin Murray needs 99 yards to reach that coveted 1,000 mark. And when he does, he'll be the eighth Buckeye back in history to do it, although Griffin did it three times. He got an awful tough yard there. Let's take a look at the Ohio State starting line now. Across the front tight end is Brad Dwelly. Left tackle Joe Smith. The left guard Scott Burris. The center Jim DeLone. The right guard Joe Lukens. The right tackle Luther Henson. And Gary Williams is the wide receiver. Murray again off the left side gets nothing might have lost a yard to the 43 good penetration by the right side of the Illinois line John Gillen was perhaps the first one through there number 38 to make the stop they mark it back a yard at the 43 and that starting Buckeye backfield of course the quarterback Art Schleister 10 the tailback Cal Murray's run it twice now and he's got zero yardage 43 the fullback Tim Spencer 46 and Doug Donkley is the flanker 47. Leister dropping back to pass, throws it in the flat. It's caught by Williams. He's at the 30, 25, 20, Goodbye. 10, 5, touchdown, Williams. And there's no yellow hanky on the field. That's for Gary Williams. Goes the distance, 43-yard pass, Ohio State's first throw on the third play of their possession. Look at him mob Gary Williams in the end zone. Gary has great speed. Watch him now. The little flanker on the isolation. He just peels right across the middle, and Art picks him up. And watch the speed as number 44 out of Wilmington, Ohio, picks him up and puts him down, and there's no catching Gary Williams. It's just a foot race to the end zone, and he wins it. A desperation dive there, but Gary's in. Now that's Williams' 21st reception of the year. It's his fourth touchdown pass. Anakievsky to try the extra point. He's 33 of 33 this year in this department. Morris is holding. Good pass from center. on Anakievsky's kick is high. It's good. With 10 minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the first period, it's Ohio State 7, Illinois nothing. Well, it didn't take the Buckeyes long. Two plays by Cal Murray netted exactly nothing. And then the crossing pass over the middle to Gary Williams, and Williams streaks some 43 yards to score. Anakievsky's extra point is good. It's seven to nothing, Ohio State. Three plays, as you mentioned, 43 yards, of course, all of them in the one big one, but you've got to look back at the Buckeye defense, which gave up some quick yards to Illinois in their first possession, but then big Keith Ferguson, the co-captain, the outside linebacker, or in the Buckeyes were in a five-man line at that time and putting the heat on it. And Keith got in there and caused the fumble that uh, Vince Skellings got, and uh, that was just a remarkable defensive play by Keith Ferguson that set this up. Here's another look at that the touchdown pass from the ground camera. Art sets up that nice protection, puts the ball right into Gary's arms, and now it's, as we said before, the foot race to 44 wins very easily, and the Buckeyes are on the board in a hurry. Eighth and now will be kicking off for Ohio State. 10 minutes, 47 seconds left in the first period. There's the approach, the kick by Atha, another booming kick, carries deep into the end zone. Martin takes it eight yards deep and downs it again. 
So the Illini will get a touch back for the second time. First and ten at the Illinois 20. Strong leg on Bobby Ace, the junior from Worthington, and uh, the breeze isn't really very much of a factor today. That's just all Bob Ace's leg, and uh, now you see Earl Bruce uh, trying to give a little direction to his Buckeyes. He's telling Lowry how he wanted that covered. Earl's quite demonstrative. I have the feeling that it wasn't properly covered. There's the pitch out to Curtis. Hugh tries to cut it in, gets only to the line of scrimmage. Marcus Merrick again makes the tackle. Merrick has made virtually every tackle for the Buckeyes. Isn't he some kind of a sophomore? Wasn't a bad freshman last year starting every ball game, but boy, he has really blossomed now. There just can't be many linebackers any better than Marcus Merrick. Split back formation, second and ten for the Illini. Wilson studies a shifting Ohio State defense. Drops back to pass, gets the protection, pass is thrown. Caught by Murphy, it's uh, fumbled. Ohio State gets it, I believe. Marcus Merrick, your man, I think, covered the fumble. Bobby Murphy, starting at safety, is the one who intercepted. And now the Buckeyes have another quick turnover. There's a Buckeye hurt, though, on the play. And it is Marcus Merrick. He is not going to stay hurt. Now watch it. Did you see Wilson dropping back? Puts the ball right out there. And, oh, he did catch it now. There. Keith Ferguson's the one who again made the hit. And there you see Marcus Merrick, 36, coming in. Keith Ferguson is just tormenting these Illini something fierce. Ferguson uh, knocked the ball loose. There's Schleister on an option, cuts it in, and goes to the 31. John Gillen, middle linebacker, makes the stop for the Illini. And we're glad to say it's brightening up now. Sun trying to come through. That's the second time Ohio has recovered an Illinois fumble. Illinois has fumbled three times so far. They had fumbled 22 times coming into this game, had lost it 14, but now you can add two more to that, so they've lost it 16 times. Fleister to pass, rushes on, passes thrown, caught by Gary Williams, and he's out of bounds at the Illinois five and a half yard line. Joe Miles is there, but he got there too late. Look at the blocking that Art's got here now as he sets up. The one-man filler's through, but Art puts the ball right on the money, right on the numbers to Gary. Look, look at Gary put that shoulder down, and he gets it to about the right on the line I five. That's 26 yards on that pass, 43 on the other. So that fine combination, Sleister to Williams, is effective again, this time down to the Illini five. The other time it went all the way for a touchdown. There is Tim Spencer hitting into the middle and gets two. Hit off right guard, actually. Squarek and Gillen are there to get him. Got about two yards from the five to the three, so let's call it second and goal at the three. Tim Spencer shifted back to the tailback position. Dwelly and Barwick, two tight ends, are in there. Schleister options, pitches it out to Murray, or Spencer, and he's hit for a loss back at the eight. They couldn't get Rick George out of the play. They had that play diagnosed all the way because they were on Art, uh, forcing Art to pitch, and then the and then uh, George has him dead to rights on the see George laying back there waiting. Gary Williams is wide open as you can see, but uh, that was a loss of about uh, almost five yards. Third down and goal now, and it's back at the seven and a half yard line. Wide to the right is Donnelly. The eye back is Spencer. Schleister drops back to pass, throws it. It is touchdown, Ohio State. Nobody covered Donnelly, and I mean no one. So Schleister throws another touchdown pass. And isn't it ironic, Wilson comes in here with the incredible credentials, and then Sleister kills him. Watch him kill him on this. Now, Dwelly was open right over the middle instantly, but they covered him quickly. Now, there's Doug Donnelly all alone. He's as lonesome alone on this. Watch the, the Doug beat his man there. The man falls down. That's George, incidentally, who messed up the last play. But Doug's great move to the inside and into the outside faked George right off his feet, and, uh, of course, Art saw him, and there's six more. Anna Kievsky trying the extra point. Tom Orris holding. It is set down. It is kicked. It's good. 
with eight minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first period. The score is Ohio State 14, Illinois nothing. And just as Art Schleister threw his fourth touchdown pass of the year to Gary Williams, now suddenly Schleister reciprocates and throws his fourth touchdown pass of the year to Doug Donnelly. So Mr. Schleister is off to quite a beginning, isn't he? He has hit Donnelly, or he has hit Williams twice, of course, the 43 and 26 yard passes, and then Donnelly on that one for the touchdown eight yards. He was as open on that, uh, Marv, as uh, Gary Williams was at Michigan State a week ago uh, when everybody took the cut that Art made and covered him. He took three men with him, and then Gary Williams didn't have anybody within 20 yards of him, and of course, Art Schleister found him. Now, this time, Doug broke free by himself that time. He had no help. It was single coverage, and uh, it's tough to, it's very difficult. Look at the Buckeye fans rooting it up. Number one, they think they are. It's going to be a real fight for number one now, Marv. I think we got about 14 teams who could eventually make it there, and this is one of them that we're watching right now. There is the approach by Atha. There's the kick, a low boomer that takes Martin five yards deep in the end zone, and for the third time, he downs it. One of these times they're going to try and bring that out, I think, because they're certainly getting nowhere starting at the 20. They move the ball a little bit and then fumble, and then move it again and fumble, and both times Keith Ferguson is the one who's caused the fumble. Both times the Buckeyes and Art Schleister with the arm have capitalized. We have not yet reached the midway point in the first quarter. Ohio State is leading 14 to nothing. Illinois has lost the ball twice on fumbles. Wilson pass in the flat it's caught by Curtis Curtis at the 22 and tackle wasn't that well covered and, and he's hurt too that's about all they need Vince Skillings made the hit Vince Skillings on the corner played that beautifully and it was a completed pass for two or three yards but I hate to see that Joe Curtis is down and they have done nothing but lose backs was Mike Murphy, is it? Yes. I'm, here we see it again. Now watch Vince stay home now and goes back and picks up the man. Oh, that's a good, tough shoulder hit, and that hurts. Mike Murphy, who had come in for just that one play, and unfortunately that might be the last play for a while, was the young man who caught that little swing pass out in the right flat, and he was blasted right at the sideline. And so another Illinois back goes down, and I imagine Mike White is beginning to wonder when, oh, when will this come to an end? Because Illinois has just been losing one back after another. Well, they got him on his feet now, and we're glad to see that Mike Murphy's on his feet, and they're going to get him back across the field. But uh, as you pointed out, they have come in here with three running backs. They have already lost Mike Holmes, Mitch Brookins, and Wayne Strader this year. And he doesn't seem to be worse for the wear, but I think it's a shoulder, and you don't run on those. But uh, I hope he gets back in the action because, as you mentioned, Mike White, the rookie coach uh, coming here from the West Coast, has just had a... Uh, run of bad breaks on the injuries. They won, as you mentioned, their first three Big Ten games and looked rather impressive, and now they've lost three in a row. In the meantime, losing a whole boatload of players as we watch Mike Wilson, a very controversial junior college transfer quarterback with a golden arm. Well, this young man's quite a passer. He came in here having thrown 294 times this season. He's completed 30 more passes, Marv, than the Buckeyes have thrown. Wilson to pass, throws over the middle. It is complete to Bakey, and Bakey gets it down to the 37 or 8-yard line. Merrick and Skillings are there to make the tackle, and that Marcus Merrick is incredible. It's 18 yards on that one, and... Uh... You see, he doesn't go for the downs. He doesn't go for that home run all the time. He picks you apart over the middle or the little flares, the swing passes, hits the tight end. Wilson again to pass. Jerome Foster rushes him incomplete in the flat. The intended receiver was Calvin Thomas. And give the credit there to Jerome Foster. He absolutely made Wilson throw the ball before he wanted to, and Thomas just couldn't get around to get it. That was good heat by Jerome. Uh, and. David Wilson was upset with himself. He spun around and smacked. He knew he 
had to get rid of it quickly, and that is his great asset. He picks up his receivers beautifully, and he throws in about 2.4 seconds. Dentino to the right, Lopez to the left for Illinois. Second and 10 at the 38. Wilson to pass. Throws over the middle. It is caught by Curtis, and he's tackled immediately at the 41. Alvin Washington had dropped back on pass defense, made the tackle. Mark Sullivan, 97. Watch him come in there. Wilson goes back. Mark Sullivan's just running right over the center, trying to put some heat on him. But there again, he hits the man coming right across the middle. And Marcus Merrick picked it up after only a three-yard gain. All right, there are five deep backs in there now for Ohio State. The nickel defense, third and six for the Illini at the Illinois 42. Long count by David Wilson. And the whistle blows too long. They ran over the allotted 25 seconds. Delay of game will be assessed against Illinois. You notice, Marv, when they go into that split back set and then David Wilson looks over the defense and does his read, and then the backs take an even wider split. And uh, that took uh, more than the 25 seconds, as you mentioned, and his uh, referee Otto uh, Quartz is indicating there. Now we see Mike White a little bit disgusted as he looks at his play chart. Now it is third and 11 for the Illini, but this will not bother them any. They'll <laughs> probably call the same play the original. Yeah. White studies a shifting Ohio State defense. Drops back to pass, throws over the middle. It's complete to Thomas. And he is close to a first down to the 49-yard line. And it appears from He's here that he might have it. I believe he does. And Petropolis and Skillings make the stop. That Petropolis made the tackle, and Skillings almost stole the football. And you see Calvin Thomas now on his knees as the Illini trainers come out to see what's wrong with him. Now you see Epitropolis isolated there, number 33. He'll come over and make the hit on Thomas. It's a good one. Vince Skillings makes a pretty good shot and goes for the football and doesn't get it. But they do indeed get the first down as they move the chains. But they're also, that's the fourth first down of the game for the Illini, who have really very little to show for it. You see Earl Bruce now uh, trying to direct a little traffic there. Uh, no, he isn't. He's trying to direct the attention of referee uh, Otho Courts to something that he doesn't particularly like. Earl is speaking to the official with his headsets on, so I'm not so sure that he can hear what the official well, says, but maybe that's just as well. He doesn't want any static, so he keeps the headsets on. And Thomas trots off the field, apparently not injured too fast. I was amused at Earl at Michigan State last week. He was trying to put the headset on, and he had his hat on, <laughs> and uh, the two just didn't go together. First and 10, line of scrimmage is the Illinois 49. Greg Foster now reports in at fullback for the Illini. Wilson studies the defense. Long count. Now Ohio shifts it. Wilson drops back to pass. Jerome Foster gets him and throws him down. Number 55, Jerome Foster, six foot two inch, 251 pound junior from Detroit, Michigan. Well, they had a corner blitz here. Now watch Jerome get in, but also Rod Gorley's coming in from the outside, and he and Keith Ferguson collide. At, watch this. Boy, do Ferguson and Gorley take each other out, but Jerome Foster took Wilson down on the seat of his britches back on the 40 yard line. That's about a nine yard loss. Second and 18 now, back at the 40. There's a draw play. It's given off to Thomas, and Thomas well, keeps driving to the 42 and is wrapped up by Epitropolis and by Ray Ellis coming up from the right corner spot. Cal Thomas apparently wasn't injured too badly uh, the previous play, but he got a few shots that time and lost his shoe as he trots off the field now. You see Art Sleister warming up on the sidelines with Gary Williams. Incidentally, in the first two possessions, Ohio State's continued a couple of pretty impressive streaks. So Donnelly has now caught a pass in his 19th straight game. Williams has caught a pass in his 21st straight. There is a wide split back formation for Illinois. There's hardly a true running back back there. Wilson dropping back to pass, throws over the middle. Martin was open, but Wilson overthrew it. 
I'll tell you right there, that tells you some kind of a story on this kid Wilson. He can throw because he went right between the seams, and he had the man there. The ball was just a dab uh, high, but he's between four Buckeyes, and Wilson put the ball right in there. And That's now, now Bostrom comes in to kick for the Illini. He's averaging 37 and two tenths yards per kick, and Norman Burrows is back to return it for Ohio State. The rush is on. Bostrom kicks low downfield. Burris will take it at the 20. Comes to the 25, to the 30, and it is tackled at about the 32. Norm Burrows of Portsmouth, Ohio, returned that one. Marty Finis got him along with Greg Dentino. So for the third time today, the Ohio State Buckeyes will get the football. The two previous times, they recovered an Illinois fumble and then converted it into touchdowns. Art Schleister threw passes to Gary Williams and to Deb Donnelly. Now it's back to the Buckeye 33. Ball's pitched back to Murray. Murray around the right side. Outruns one man, but then runs out of bounds. Wound up sitting on the Illinois bench. Hit it pretty hard, as yes, a he did. Of fact. He's okay as he drops back across the track onto the field. Have you noticed, Kay, when an opposing player goes into the bench, they just let you go. When uh, one of your own teammates goes into the bench, why they're there to help you. <laughs> Make it a little more comfortable, don't they? <laughs> Looks like the yellow flag went, though, while we were watching Cal Murray sprint wide, and uh, his seven-yard gain is going to be obliterated and go clear back to the 18-yard line. And then we'll get uh, Otho... Flipping. Courts' is a signal, flipping. Flipping is called against Ohio State. 15-yard step off moves them now back to the 18-yard line. The down remains the same, but now it is 25 yards to go. And that's the first uh, penalty whistled on the Buckeyes today. Two wide receivers to the left, Donnelly wide, and then in the slot is Williams. Sleister to pass, Murray out of the backfield. It's thrown instead to Williams. He's got it at the 29. Stop is made by Rick George, but that's the third time that Sleister has hit Gary Williams, and if my memory is correct, is an art four of four. Uh, your memory's very good, and incidentally, he had Doug Donnelly streaking down the sidelines wide open. Doug had blown right by the free safety, but uh, Art didn't uh, pick him up. He picked up Cal or picked up uh, Gary, and he also picked up. Uh, uh, 12 yards. Second and 14 now. Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Schleister to pass, has the time, throws one upfield. It is caught again. Dandy catch by Donnelly. That was a low catch and not at all easy to make. And Donnelly had to go around the defender. Yeah, he certainly did. And watch him. This is the way it was set up because Art's throwing to a spot here. Doug runs to the sidelines and then peels in right around behind the defender that he's beaten and dives and makes a very low fingertip catch down on the Illinois 44. And that was thrown right to the spot. Twenty-seven yards on that. Schleister is five of five now. First down, Ohio State. Draw play to Murray, right up the middle. Good yardage. Down to the Illinois 37. John Gillen makes the tackle for the Illini, and Ohio State is just chewing Illinois up. Well, the passing is opening it up just a little bit. The Illini played in awfully tight as the ball game opened, just making sure that the Buckeyes weren't going to run it down their throats, so Art passed it down their throats. Now, as he throws it a little bit, it's opening up the... It's spreading the defense out a little and uh, giving Cal some running room. Now there are three wide receivers in there for Ohio State as Cedric Anderson reports in. Schleister drops back to pass. The rush is on. Screen pass to Murray. He's at the 35, the 30, tackled at the 29. John Gillen makes the stop. We're seeing a little mixture here, aren't we? Uh, Marv, he's gone for the deep ones to Williams and Donnelly, but he's also hit Cal Murray now coming out of the backfield, and that gets the first down, the sixth of the game for the Buckeyes. If anybody had any doubts about Schleister's ability to throw, just watch the screen. He is six of six. Wide to the right is Donnelly, to the left is Williams. <laughs> Gale now is the eye back for Ohio State. 
as Spencer has gone to fullback. There is Gale trying the right side, eludes a man, and uh, gets pretty good yardage to the 27. Good effort by Jimmy Gale, but you always get a good effort from Jim Gale. Had some pretty good pursuit on him then, too. Uh, the blocking did break down a little bit, but Jimmy found a hole enough to save the loss. Incidentally, Art is, as you mentioned, 6 for 6, 126 yards, Marv. That leaves him eight yards shy of Archie Griffin's all-time Ohio State total offense record of 5,589 yards. Baster dropping back to pass again. Throws one, it is. Caught by Donnelly, leaping pass. At the 18-yard line, first down Ohio State. Schleister is seven out of seven. Watch this effort by Doug Donnelly. Goes sky high and really gets a shot in the back as he as he gets the ball, but look at that. Right straight up in the air, and down he comes at the 18-yard line. Leister is now seven out of seven as Donnelly and Williams go wide to the right. First and 10 at the Illini 17. And he needs three more yards for that total offense record. Leister on an option. Won't get it on that play. Tackle at the 18, perhaps the 19. Lead tackle by Tab Carmeen. Tab Carmeen makes the tackle for the Illini. And one of the Illinois players running to the sideline evidently hurt his shoulder. This Illinois ball club is just coming apart. The Ohio offense just looks razor sharp today. Second and 18. Oh, that can't be. Scoreboard says <laughs> second and 18. It's second and ten. probably 10. There's the pitch out to Gale. Gale's got good yardage. He's to the five, the four, the two. Tackle at about the two-yard line. A fine, strong run by Jimmy Gale. A very deep pitch, too, on, uh, by Art. Now watch it here. On the replay, Art fakes to Tim Spencer and then throws it very deep to uh, Jimmy Gale. Now watch Jimmy when he sees the little hole there. He gets the seam and just keeps plowing down to the two-yard line. And Jimmy comes out now as Donnelly comes out. And the crowd puts up quite a howl. Well, the quarter ends. That's the reason. So they have to change in. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Ohio State 14, Illinois nothing. We'll be back with the start of the second quarter after this brief message. Research is just one of many ongoing activities at Ohio State University. More and more, farmers and others interested in agricultural research are seeking new ways to get more out of their farming dollar. One study at the university's Ohio Agricultural Research and Development Center demonstrates that the use of warm wastewater can shorten the growth period for lettuce by up to 20 days. This allows greenhouse planters an extra planting. The soil beds are heated by warm wastewater heated at temperatures from 80 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit, running through plastic pipes buried a foot below the soil's surface. Lettuce grown in the heated soil have produced up to four times as much yield as that grown in unheated soil. The study is designed to find a way to make heated electrical utility wastewaters a source of useful energy rather than a thermal pollution problem. As you can see, Ohio State is serving you. With Kay Kessler, this is Marv Homan from Ohio Stadium in Columbus. The Buckeyes have it first and goal at the two. Williams goes in motion to the left. Spencer hits off right guard. Touchdown, Spencer of Ohio State. Spencer slammed off right guard and got the score. That's some beautiful blocking when he did it, too. He just bounced in off the right guard and behind Delone. They go 67 yards in 12 plays, and this is the one that caps it, as you see. Timmy Spencer put his shoulder into the linebacker and take him right on into the end zone, and that capped the 67-yard march, as we said, in 12 plays. So for the third time today, Vladi Anikievsky will come in to try the extra point. Vladi is 35 of 35 this season. Tom Orris is holding. John Hutchings is the center. There's the snap. There's the kick. It's up. It's good. And a flag is down, however. The kick was dead center, but a flag is down. Now we'll see what the violation is. 
Illinois is offside. So the Buckeyes, of course, will take the kick. With 14 minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the second period, the score is Ohio State 21, Illinois nothing. Our astute statistician, Rocky Thompson, Marv, unofficially shows Arch Leister with 139 yards, which is one more than he needed. You watch Brutus Buckeye do his little uh, whatever he does down there, but that's one more yard than Archie Griffin had managed in his four years for the total offense record, and so unless Art loses something on uh, some quarterback options and so forth, he's got the record wrapped up. And he's got a little bit of time left in the scarlet and gray uniform. You mentioned the Buckeyes, though, offensively. They've had the football three times. They've scored three touchdowns. And Art is absolutely 7-for-7 seven seven and perfect for 135 yards through the air. Uh, the blocking protection for him has been superb by Joe Lukens and Luther Henson and DeLone and Burris up front. Uh, they've just done a remarkable job. Well, we've said it before, and we'll say it again. You give Art Schleister time, and there just isn't a better quarterback in college football than he. Martin. Dentino and Foster, the three deep men for the Illini. 21 to nothing, Ohio State leads. We're only three seconds into the second period. Atha prepares to kick off. Boots it. Iwin carrying well into the end zone, and Martin is going to come out with it. He's out to the 5, to the 10, to the 15, wrapped up at the 15. It's okay. <laughs> he tried it, but he didn't quite get to the 20. <laughs> Yeah, Glenn Cobb brought him down uh, five yards short of where he'd have been had he downed the ball in the end zone. And, you know, after three in a row uh, deep into the end zone where Bobby Ather puts it, they figured they don't have much to lose. Well, they did. They lost five yards doing it. But I'd, I guess I'd have to give it a shot, too. There's that wide split back formation for the Illini as Lopez lines up wide to the left. Ohio shifts the defense, and that bothers Wilson. There is a counter play given off to Curtis, and he's got yardage to the about the 22, where they're going to mark it. Rod Gorley comes up from the secondary. And the maddest man on the field is Marcus Merrick, 36, because he hit him about the line of scrimmage and lost him. He went right through his arms, and that does not happen to Marcus Merrick very often. Merrick's contact ratio must be about 95% today. Second and three. There is a draw play to the fullback, uh, Thomas, and Thomas gets it across the 25 to the 26, and he appears to have the first down. Ream and Cobb are there to make the stop. Chris Ream, 93. Glenn Cobb, 35. Two fine sophomores for Ohio State. Now here comes Cobb out, and John Epitropoulos goes in to replace him. First and 10 Illini at the Illinois 26. Wilson, back to pass, gets good time, throws over the middle, incomplete. Tended receiver was Cam Benson, but they overthrew him. <laughs> Vince Skilling thought he should have had it, too. Now uh, Wilson's consulting with uh, Otho Kurtz about something. There's a flag on the play. We'll see what the discussion is. Looks like offensive interference against the Illini, so it'll cost him yardage and a down. He wrecked. Back to the 13. That looks like it's about a 13-yard penalty. Offensive interference called against the Illini. It is second down and 23. There's the Chinese god of happiness, Earl, facing the sidelines with a 21 to nothing lead. Wilson studies the three-man line for Ohio State. Now he shifts his back. Straightens up, throws the pass in the flat. Caught by Dentino, and he's out of bounds. Or is that Lopez? That's Dentino. Illinois' numbers are very difficult to read. It's orange on white. 
There just isn't much contrast. Get a little wrinkle in there and a shadow. Now we see again. Now watch the quick release there. He sees him just as he turns around to see it. Then Tino leaps high to get it. Has nowhere to go. He's a little bit off balance. And uh, Rod Gorley makes sure he stays that way. And he puts him out of bounds on the 22. But it's a nine-yard gain. Third and 14 now for the Illini. A possession play coming. Wilson shifts his backs. Goes back to pass. Gets good protection. Throws one upfield. It is caught as the man got behind Skillings. It's Dentino, and, and Skillings can't bring him down. Dentino drags Skillings to the 30. Finally, uh, Bob Murphy came up to assist. Skillings was hanging on for dear life, and he just couldn't get Dentino down. The Buckeyes had a six-man uh, front then and really put the heat trying to rush him and couldn't. And now watch Dentino, one, beat uh, Vince Skillings and then take him for a pretty good joyride. Now watch how he beats Vince on this play. Gets the chuck and now he goes right behind him and Vince didn't think that could happen. Takes the ball on his shoulder and gets it clear down to the Buckeye 31. First and 10 Illini. There's a draw play to Curtis and he gets a tough yard. About the 29. Ferguson and Ep Epitropolis are there to get him. Keith Ferguson is 65. John Epitropolis 33. That Both are seniors. Excuse me, Marv, but that last pass is not the kind that David Wilson normally throws, and that's what Earl's probably checking the chart on right now, saying, wait a minute, he doesn't throw that home run ball very often. Well, he did for 47 yards on that one. The computer must have lied. <laughs> Hofer now, normally a quarterback, is in at one of the running back spots. They're running out of running backs, Wilson. Back to pass, throws it in the flat. It is caught by Martin, and he's out of bounds. Stepped out of the 12 and a half yard line, uh, 17 and a half yard line. Ellis is defending. Watch the man's isolated out there. Gets a good block on Al Washington, trying to blitz a little bit, but uh, takes the ball out on the 17, picks up 12 yards. As you see the same shot now from our ground, fine ground camera. Right into his arms, out of bounds at the 17. First and 10 Illini at the Ohio State 17. Wilson to pass, rushes on, passes intercepted by Epitropolis of Ohio State. John is at the 25, at the 29, tackled at the 29 or 30. Give credit to Mark Sullivan on that, though. He's the one who came bursting right through over center. Watch Mark Sullivan, little 97, comes on the outside there, makes him throw it a little too quickly, and stepping in front of it on about the 12-yard line is John Epitropoulos, and he's making like a halfback. It's a great block there. Making like a halfback as he brings it upfield to the 30, and that is the third turnover of the football game for the Illini. So the Buckeyes get a pass interception. That's the uh, ninth time that Wilson has been intercepted this year, and that's really a remarkable record. There's the deep reverse. It's given to Cedric Anderson. He's all the way back at the 20. He's to the 25 and out of bounds. Deep reverse there. Anderson got the ball, but Illinois kind of sensed that one coming, and they put good pressure. Well, and Art didn't give him a very good block then. I have to have to point that out, because on the deep reverse, Art's got to pick up the corner man coming in there, and Cedric went very deep and uh, lost two yards in the process. Maybe three. Unbelievable amount of running for a play that lost two yards. <laughs> well, a little bit of trickery there by... The Earl of Bruce. Five-man front for Illinois. Sleister throws the quick pass. Caught by Donnelly, and Donnelly is upset at about the Buckeye 39. Well, I don't think Sleister's missed yet. That's uh, eight for eight, and for about 145 yards, roughly. Smooth that out for you in a minute. Second down. Now they're going to measure, bring the chains in from one side to the other. Donnelly was tackled just about a yard inside on the west sideline. So they bring the chains in. You'll see the measurement. That is, you'll see if 
some of the fellows on the sideline get out of the way, which they're obviously <laughs> not going to do. A little bit short. Well, you got to give him 11 yards on that, and that makes Arch figures uh, 146 passing. Official sets the ball down exactly at the 39-yard line when he places the ball at the hash mark. Third down, less than a yard to go at the Buckeye 39. 12 minutes and two seconds remain in the second period. 21 to nothing in favor of Ohio State. You got to say, Art's got the better of the passing parade today uh, against the man who is leading the Big Ten in that department. David Wilson's having a tough time of it. Art's having a perfect day. He just can't do any better than Sleister has done. Eight of eight. Sleister. On a quick handoff to Murray, he's got a first down as he bumps to the 42. Carew Taylor. Interesting first name, C-A-R-O-O-Q. The normal pronunciation of Carew, <laughs> as in Rod Carew. Line of scrimmage, the Ohio State 42, first and 10 now. To the left is Donnelly, to the right is Gary Williams. They have been very active today. Five-man line for Illinois. Hand off to Murray, who gets to the 45. Carew Taylor again is there to get him, number 30. Cal didn't have much running room there as he gets uncovered in the pile up there. Timmy Spencer put a block on the corner and Cal found a hole for three yards, but it was tough. You see Mike White on the sidelines looking over his obviously computer printout on something and now you see the happy Buckeye fans on the opposite side. Second and seven, Sleister to pass, gets good protection, throws over the middle. He's got Donnelly again. And Donnelly is gonna get wrestled to the ground at the 14 yard line. Sleister is nine of nine. down the middle of the defense. Watch it, 41 yards, and Doug Donnelly beats them deep again, and Art pumped once and let it go. He did have great protection there. Now watch Doug hug the football and get about six more yards, and he gets it down to the 14-yard line. First and 10 Buckeyes. Now it's down inside the 15-yard line in Illinois territory. Murray, off right guard, finds a hole to the 10, to the 6. Tackled at the six-yard line. I watched Luther Henson on that play, number 54, the, the big right tackle who has moved over from the defense. Now watch Luther on the outside here. He's out of our picture, but he really took the corner man right out of the picture. And look at the job that Cal Murray done there, did there. Now look at here. Oh, what a block by Tim Spencer on the linebacker. He gets a piece of Cal, but Cal gets it down to the six. That's a nine-yard gain. One thing about Luther Henson, if he can get to you, you are in trouble. Second down and one. Line of scrimmage is the six-yard line as the Buckeye offense has just absolutely riddled Illinois defensively. Uh, as I looked at our camera work, it was magnificent on Luther Henson, and it was a little bit too good because it showed him doing a pretty neat uh, holding number on the man, too, with his right hand. As you see Art now consulting with Coach Earl Bruce, and he had second thoughts and called him back for uh, another word. Now he's talking to Doug Donnelly, and on the other side of the field, Mike White just reaching for anything. You know, he said coming in here, Marv, that the one thing that disturbed him about it is rookie season. While they've done a great job over there and they've won three ball games, which may be more than anybody else expected they would do this year, he said his ball club doesn't seem to be having any fun. And yet he's a pretty loosely wound coach. He has uh, very few meetings. They tell me his practices end sharply at 530. He's got good squad morale. He's just lost too many players and there have been too many injuries. And now on a three game losing streak, it's tough to have a lot of fun, I guess, under those circumstances for back back. Second and one, Sleister to Spencer. He's got a first down off left tackle as he drives to the two. Bob Stowe, number 70, is there to make the tackle. 263 pounders, six feet five, a freshman. There's a couple other little figures that are interesting. Gary Williams has caught three passes today for 80 yards. Doug Donnelly has caught five for 96. 
The other one, of course, went to Cal Murray and a perfect nine for nine for Schleister. Clock running, nine minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half. Score is 21 to nothing for Ohio State. Buckeyes are just two yards away from still another score. Donnelly in motion to the left. Schleister caught for a loss. As knifing through was Dan Griggis. Nobody picked him up. That play never developed. But developed rather badly for Arch Schleister because Griggis just blows through there, and I don't know who missed uh, the block. Uh, it's on Lukens and uh, Henson's side, but uh, Griggis uh, developed it beautifully for the Illini, and they put Art down back on the seventh. Second down and goal now. Back at the seven-yard line, Donnelly comes out. Gary Williams lines up wide to the right. There are two tight ends in there, Barwig and Dwelly. Now Williams goes in motion to the left. Schleister drops back to pass, throws over. Touchdown easily to Brad Dwelly. Wasn't anybody close to him. Ohio overloaded one side and then threw back to the other side, and Dwelly was wide open. And that's the fourth receiver Art has hit today. Well, he's been open on a previous play when, when Art found Donnelly at the other end of the field. Now we see it again. Good protection for Art. He just turns around. Well, he comes over the middle from his tight end spot. All alone, and he hugs the ball in, and uh, Brad Dwelly now gets into the touchdown picture. That one went 71 yards in seven plays. You are seeing one of the great exhibitions of passing for Ohio State or any other team today that Art Schleister is putting on. He is nine for nine. Make it 10 for 10. Anikievsky's extra point is high, it is good. With eight minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the first half, it is Ohio State 28, Illinois nothing. This time, a Schleister to Donnelly pass set up the drive and then a Schleister to Dwelly pass was good for the fourth touchdown. Take a look at it as you see Gary Williams go in motion. Art just drops right back. He's got Vaughn Brodnax there. Nice block by the freshman. Art finds Dwelly, as we said, dwelling all alone in the end zone. And uh, he's got it up to 195 yards in 10 completions in 10 throws. That's, uh, my mathematics tells me, is 19.5 a pass. And as you mentioned, the big one there was 41 yards to Doug Donnelly. They go 71 yards in seven plays, leading at 28 to nothing. Marv, they've had the ball four times. They've scored four touchdowns. You can't do any better than that. They're announcing over the public address system that Schleister is 10 for 10 and is the all-time uh, total offense leader. Well, we had that for you little while ago our man Rocky still a case that. we were ahead of him <laughs> well now Kate not a not for it happened but uh, <laughs> we had it when it happened ah, in done. any event he's the he is indeed the all-time total offense leader eighth uh, kicks downfield a floater that Foster handles at about the eight gets pretty good blocking comes up to the 30 to 32 tackled at the 33 Greg Foster returned that one. That's the best field position the Illini have had to start anything with. They've started from the 20, from the 20, from the 15, and now when Bobby Eighth they got a little floater kick that's out on the 33. First and 10 Illini at the Illinois 33. Overcast, rather dark here. Wilson. Dropping back to pass, throws one out in the flat, overthrows his intended receiver, Calvin Thomas. Incomplete. And Keith Ferguson, 65, was in there to help. Keith's a big, tall fella. He's six, four and a half, and uh, he makes you throw the ball a little, few places you'd rather not, and uh, David Wilson was not very happy with that one. Keith Ferguson is another of those outstanding seniors. Ohio State has big and rangy senior from Miami, Florida. Fine, fine athlete. Back to passes. Wilson throws over the middle. Caught nicely. Oh, a dandy catch by uh, Sherrod. Mike Sherrod caught it. Gorley was defending. They're going to mark it at the 43. Little bit short of a first down, less than a yard. Now the 
apparently official gave a first down signal. signal. Yes, I think it is. A man with a down box was in the wrong place then. He's calling the men, but he's, I think he says there's no point in measuring, and I know it's a first down. It is. It's 10 yards and a first down. And that, incidentally, was the 10th completion for uh, David Wilson in 13 throws, and he's got 139 yards. He also doesn't have anything on the scoreboard. And yet, ironically, uh, Wilson is just totally overshadowed by Sleister today. Well, Wilson doesn't have any running support, and, uh, and that has to hurt. Martin to the left for the Illini. Wilson back to pass. Throws one incomplete. The intended receiver was Gerard. Illinois bench a little upset there, figuring that Ohio State interfered. They were a little upset. David Wilson was a little upset, too, because Tony McGarrow went busting in there and put... Uh, you see Merrick now. He got out of the umpire's way. Uh, Merrick's going after the receiver. I think he may have hit him. Uh, they could have uh, probably gotten away with an interference call there. It is second down and 10 at the Illinois 43-yard line. There's a draw play. It's given off to Thomas, and he goes nowhere. McGarrow and Sullivan get him. The draw play, uh, play drew a lot of... Earl Bruce now, hands behind his back. But that draw play drew three Buckeyes. Third down and 10 as Sean Gale reports in for Ohio State. Not sure who is going out. Now Jerome Foster decides to go out. Third and 10. Wilson studies the defense. Drops back to pass. Throws one out in the flat. It's caught, but way short of the first down by Joe Curtis. Curtis dived for the ball, and needlessly so, because he really was relatively uncovered, but that killed the play. Well, it did, but Al Washington, number 15, coming in with his hands high, he couldn't get around the blocker, but he got his hands up enough to, I think, make the trajectory of the ball a little off, so he had to make a falling catch for 48, and they're forced to punt. For the second time today, Kirk Bostrom is back to kick. Norman Burroughs is the deep man for Ohio State. High pass from center. Not too much of a rush. A kick off the side of his foot, which Ellis catches almost out of bounds. They're going to say that Ellis went out at the 14-yard line. So Illinois has Ohio State backed up pretty well in Buckeye territory now, back at the 14-yard line. But with a big play team like Ohio State and with an arch Sleister, Sometimes it is difficult to keep a team in that position. Ricky Johnson almost blocked that punt a moment ago, too. That's all the Illini would need to have happen. To First and 10, back at the Ohio State 14. There's a quick handoff to Tim Spencer, who gets a good five, maybe six, to the 20-yard line. Tim Spencer, the ball carrier. Middle of the Buckeye line, Scott Burris and Joe Lukens, the guards, and Jim DeLeon, the center, did some good blocking there. They just wedged it out, and Spencer went six. Second and four. Gives him a dozen yards in his four carries in the ball game. Again, it's Spencer off left guard, and he gets one or two. They rule at the 22, so it's two yards. Spencer carrying. Tim Ohio State hasn't punted yet. I hope Tom Orris isn't rusting. <laughs> Tom Morris does not tend to get rusty. He's a pretty good athlete. Brad Dwelly comes in. John Frank goes out at the tight end position. Frank is the fine sophomore from Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Clayster on the option, eludes a man, is in deep trouble, just sort of shoveled it off to Murray. And Murray got a yard or two. They're still short of a first down. That was an option that really wasn't much of an option. You know, technically, that might be a forward pass there because Schleister sort of... That was an escape, Mark. ...shoveled it off to uh, Murray. Look at Murray as he comes off the field, rather disheveled. They've torn his tear away into about shreds. Calvin goes through about seven jerseys a ball game. In fact, they've even quit putting his name on the back of it now. Dentino and Martin go deep 
for the Illini as Horace is in to kick for the first time. Good bat from center. Horace gets off a towering kick downfield. Martin will take it at the Illinois 30. He's at the 35, the 39, and that's it. Lifted in the air and thrown down at the 39-yard line by Mike DeAndrea. DeAndrea plays exceptionally well on the specialty teams. He's a rugged youngster from Akron, Ohio. That was a 50-yard punt by Thomas. And into the wind, which isn't very strong, admittedly. Pass in the flat, juggled and dropped. Calvin Thomas had a tough time handling it. Wasn't thrown very well. Real tough pass to handle, and Thomas just couldn't handle it. Well, Thomas saw Rod Gorley bearing down on him, too, and uh, maybe you don't want to handle that, although he wanted that football. He's a pretty tough number, Calvin Thomas is. He's the best running back they still have running. Most of their guys are uh, in or the, or <laughs> the combat. Besides, they're hurt. Yeah, in addition, they're not here. Second and 10 at the 39. Split back formation. Wilson to pass. Caught at the 46-yard line. Merrick went in high and just almost beheaded Curtis. <laughs> Curtis just ducked under it. And Marcus got an arm full of air, but uh, I can't blame Curtis for going down on his knees when he sees 36 bearing down on him. Not at all. He got seven yards there. Third and three now at the Illinois 46. They must go to the 49 to get a first down. There's Wilson passing. Caught by Curtis. He's got a first down, and he's out of bounds at the Buckeye 39. Glenn Cobb trailed that play and made the stop. Well, that's about 14 yards for him. That's their eighth first down. You know, the, he gets great protection, Marv. Uh, they don't have much of a running game, but uh, you give him three times to throw, and he's going to get that first down on you. He just picks his way down the field, and he's got it across midfield to about the Buckeye 38. Illinois is a very well-conceived pass offense, no doubt about that. Buckeyes are stunning a little bit, trying to figure a way to get in on him, but they haven't been too successful. Wilson's in trouble, throws down the middle, caught by Bakey, fumbles it, and they're going to rule it incomplete. Bakey didn't have it long enough. Murphy and Ellis really plowed into Bakey, and uh, Ellis is probably the one that knocking looks like it he has it long enough. Watch him here now. He has a deep drop. Jerome Foster was coming in on him, but that's a pretty good throw. I got to believe that's a completed pass. The official doesn't believe it's a completed pass, and who wins those things? The guys in the striped shirts. Is that the first time you disagreed with an official? Oh, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just pointing out a. He's just uh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and ten at the 39. Back to passes Wilson. Loads of time over the middle. Caught. And the tackle is made at the 35-yard line by Keith Ferguson. John Lopez caught that. I think that's the first catch that Lopez has had today. Came into the game with 24 receptions for 357 yards. Now watch the blocking, though, he gets. David Wilson really gets protected well. He comes right across the middle. He went right into Keith Ferguson there and then goes down the line, getting nowhere. But he did pick up three yards. Hofer is in at one of the running back spots now for the Illini. Third and six at the Buckeye 35. Whistle blows, and again, I suspect Illinois has used too much time. Seemed like it was a long time in getting that snap. I don't really understand why they go through all of the shifting, because they don't have any kind of a running attack. They don't even make any pretense, and they might as well go into that wide split for openers and then let him read the defense. Well, there is a five-yard delay of game penalty called against the Illini. Third and 11 now, back at the Ohio State 40. Wide to the right is Dentino. To the left is Lopez. Wilson to pass. Throws over the middle. Caught by Martin, and Martin is hit immediately at the 21. 
Bob Murphy made the hit, but Martin got the ball. 19 yards on this one. We'll take another look from upstairs. He steps up very strongly. Man, he's got a good arm. Good looking passer. And he finds the open man right across the middle. First and 10 Illini. The ball is at the Ohio State 21. Two minutes and 24 seconds left in the first half. 28 to nothing. Ohio State leading. Again, Wilson to pass. Crossing pattern. It's thrown out in the flat. It's caught by Calvin Thomas, and Thomas advances to the nine-yard line. Thomas, the intended receiver, and he got the football and then got it down to the nine. Stop is made by Vince Skillings, left cornerback of Ohio State. you got to remember, Marv, that Ohio State is playing, of course, without Todd Bell, their rover back, and that's one of Todd's real strong points he, he blitzes from the back side and uh, we haven't seen that today with rod gorley playing in that position they just haven't gone to that type of defense yet but they are not getting in on david wilson give him time and he'll pick you apart first and goal at the nine for the illini martin in motion to the left wilson to pass rush from the blind side pass is thrown it's caught by martin he's out of bounds at the one it's awfully close to being in there might be a flag in the end zone. And limping back to the huddle is Mike Martin. He's, in fact, he's not going to the huddle. He's going off the field. The umpire is discussing it with him. Somebody picked the flag up and moved it down to the three-yard line. Curious move. It was dropped in the end zone. Martin is in real trouble as he limps off the field, too. The penalty is against Illinois. He was right there at the uh, little styrofoam marker at the goal line. But he isn't going to be. Apparently it's pass interference uh, offensive or deep. Offensive pass interference evidently was called against John Lopez, number 13 of the Illini. Who well, was not in the play. That nullified a pretty good play because they were down there right at the goal line on that one. That's the second offensive interference. It takes him clear back to the 24. Second and 24 at the 24 for the Illini with 135 remaining in the first half. There's a pass through, and it is caught. Touchdown. Took it right away from two Buckeyes who were down there, Skillings and Burroughs. A what a catch by Dentino. Greg Dentino, watch this now. He goes right up in the air over one Buckeye, over Skillings. Oh, and then he rolls into the end zone. Dentino, you know why he's their number one receiver. Now he gets behind Vince on this one, goes straight up in the air, takes it away from Vince. Now he squirms around and gets into the end zone for a great 24-yard touchdown play. Just a brilliant touchdown catch by Greg Dentino, who just overpowered the Buckeye defender on the play. Well, it was a great throw, too. Give Wilson credit. Oh, yes, right there. Bass is in to try the extra point for the Illini. It a high pass in center. The kick is up. It's high. It's good. With one minute and 29 seconds remaining in the first half, the score is Ohio State 28, Illinois 7. Well, that's the one thing, Marv, that uh, Denny Frizzell worried about, uh, David Wilson's arm, and he said that this would be a good test for the Buckeyes' uh, defense, and it certainly was. Uh, Wilson put him to test, and he is 16 out of 22 in this first half for 220 yards. Dentino has caught four of those for 119 yards, and of course, that 24-yard touchdown play as we look at some of the homecoming revelers in the Ohio State great marching band. Dentino came into this game with 27 receptions and only two touchdown passes, but there was just an outstanding reception and effort. There it is again on number 19, Dentino. He goes around behind the chuck of uh, Vince Skellings. Now Vince has good coverage on him, but look at Dentino go up in the air to spear the ball. 
then spins around into the end zone 24 yards on that touchdown pass. That's 35 catches for the season for that young man. Murray and Spencer are the deep men for Ohio State. Murray on the near side, Spencer on the far side. Bass kicking off for the Illini, 1.29 remaining in the first half. The kick by Bass will carry down to Calvin Murray at the 1. Murray to the 10, to the 20, and that's it. Buckeyes will get it, first and 10 on the Ohio State 20-yard line. Well, that's interesting. Marv, uh, well, we see the run back here now. And uh, good, good lead block right there. Whoa, uh, alley-oop up and over, and uh, Cal got it back out to the 20-yard line. The Buckeyes have scored their first four possessions, but did not on their last one. Schleister to pass. Going to run with it. He's to the 20. Going to run out of bounds and just get the clock stopped. Illinois had excellent coverage, although Doug Donnelly was a country mile down the far sideline. A flag is down. Holding will probably be called against Ohio State, but let's wait and see. Well, the Illini might even refuse that one because there was no gain on the play, and that's the, I think they are going to refuse it. It was about a half a yard gain on the play. That's the best that they have done defensively against the Buckeyes. In the Holding is called on Ohio State. Penalty is declined by the Illini as in as much as the play did not gain. So it is second and ten. Cedric Anderson came out of the game for the Buckeyes. Gary Williams to the left. Doug Donnelly to the right. John Frank moves out about ten yards in the right slot. Back to passes, Schleister throws over the middle. It's caught by Gary Williams. Williams is down to the 43, and Hart is 11 of 11. First down, Ohio State. 23 yards on that pass. You see it again. Look at the protection Hart's getting. They're really blocking for him. He finds Gary right down the middle. Look at Gary pick up passengers. And that's 23 more yards for Gary. Arts 11 for 11, 218 yards, and Gary Williams has 103 in uh, the four that he's caught. Gary Williams is an outstanding athlete. He's 6'2", 204-pound sophomore from Wilmington, Ohio, and he was a quarterback in high school. Right, he played against Art. A great young man, Gary Williams is, and we saw a moment ago Earl Bruce counseling his quarterback, uh, Art Schleister. But as you mentioned, from Wilmington, and they played against one another, and they're very good friends. Everybody thinks that all Art looks for is Doug Donnelly. I've heard that about frequently, but uh, don't you believe it today? First and ten, the line of scrimmage, the Buckeye 43, a minute ten remaining. Exposed Schleister is going to put on another one of those incredible marches. Minute and ten left. Well, I tell you, David Wilson did a pretty good job in the short time he had the football a moment ago. He, uh, he took him down there in about three minutes. Uh, Again, Schleister is back to pass, throws one upfield. It is deflected, batted away. Donnelly was the intended receiver. You know that ball was right on target, but a good defensive play by Rick Jordan. Excellent. Look where Doug is going. We threads his way back through the band members, but uh, boy, he had that to Doug all the way, and a great defensive play finally breaks Art's string at 11 in a row. And the irony was that pass was right on the target. He just. That's just an outstanding defensive play by Rick George. To the left is Williams, to the right is Donnelly. Second and 10. Schleister again to pass. He's gonna get, uh, well, he runs out of the trouble. Now he streaks for the sideline, goes out of bounds to 47. And the line eye player really got belted into the Buckeye bench. Water bucket, in fact. Parcelli, and uh, that was a little bit of a late hit. Art goes over and shakes hands with him, but Parcelli doesn't feel much like shaking hands with anybody. That was a little bit 
out of bounds, I believe. Well, the Gatorade or whatever, it got uh, spread to the winds. They knocked the table over. The phone came disconnected. Well, as we isolate on Gary Williams running a solo uh, flight down the left sideline, begging for the football, but uh, it didn't go that direction. Art was looking the other way. The Ohio State bench is a catastrophe area now. Rush on Sleister, passes thrown, dropped by Gary Williams. Right in his hands, and he dropped the football. He was looking for the out of bounds, Marv. He yeah. was right there, and I know that's what he wanted to see. Gary's got the ball as he isolate on him again, and he runs a fine pass route, and puts the cut right there, goes to the sideline. Oh, that's got to be, well, I don't know. It went right on through his fingers, but he wanted to get out of bounds. That couldn't have been any better if you'd have walked down there and handed it to him. Fourth and six now. Tom Orris will come in to kick with 52 seconds remaining. Dentino and Martin, the two deep men for the Illini. Good pass from center. Oh, a poor kick by Orris. That's the first of that kind this year. Just off the side of his foot, didn't go anywhere. Went out of bounds at the Illinois 37-yard line. Tom Orris very upset at himself. Had no one to blame but himself. It just didn't get it square. So the Illini will have the football first and 10 at Illinois' 37-yard line. With 46 seconds remaining in the first half, 28 to 7, Ohio State winning handily. Lopez to the right. Benson to the left for Illinois. Wilson dropped the snap, picked it up, loops one down to Martin, incomplete. Good defensive play by Bob Murphy. You know, I think Arch 11 for 11 passing is a, a Buckeye record. I think that uh, Bill Murkowski once hit 10 for 10, uh, but I think Art has now broken that with 11 in a row. I can't. Murkowski had the record. That's right. I believe it was 10 in a row that uh, Murkowski had completed. I'll find it in my adult files here momentarily. Second down and 10 for the Illini at the 37-yard line. Pass is thrown. It's incomplete. No, I guess they're going to rule it complete to Martin. Murkowski completed 12. Well, okay. I'm, I'm right. You're right. Against UCLA and Illinois in 1961. So Art fell one pass shy. Pass was caught by Mike Martin, and they rule it dead at the 44. Marcus Merrick was there to stop the play. 31 seconds left. Illinois has called time to get the clock stopped. Well, it took a great defensive effort uh, on the part of George to uh, keep Art from hitting it the 12th one in a row, and then he hit the next one to Gary Williams, and he dropped it, so uh, Art has missed his last two attempts. But uh, he certainly has put on a dazzling first-half display. You watch Mike White uh, counseling his fine junior or senior or whatever year he's liable to be declared. Uh, at any rate, first-year quarterback, there's Earl Bruce on the opposite side of the field who just listened to Denny Frizzell counsel Marcus Merrick. When the phone got disconnected on that out-of-bounds play, Earl took his headsets off. So We've seen the phones disconnected more than once in this stadium and for varying reasons. <laughs> there you go. 31 seconds left, Mark. Can he go 40, 55 yards? Well, he'll be trying. You can bet on that. David Wilson. Studies the situation. Third down and two. Wilson drops back to pass. Gets dandy protection. Throws in the flat. Good uh, play there by Curtis. And he's pulled down now by Marcus Merrick, who absolutely saved the touchdown. Curtis did a lot of head faking on that one, and that was a great job. Watch the replay now. He should have been picked up in uh, short yardage right there. That's Merrick who missed it, but watch him. Uh, Cobb, was it? All right, watch Merrick go down the sidelines and take him out of bounds. You're right, saved the touchdown at the 30. He ducked under Cobb, but it was Merrick he ducked under on a play earlier, and here we go in the hurry-up offense. Back to passes. Wilson has time, throws the bomb in the end zone. Incomplete. We weren't sure about that, were we? No, Skilling's, Skilling's defending. Mike Martin was the intended receiver. For a little guy, Martin has an amazing amount of spring. 
He can really get up in the air. Martin goes to the sideline now. I think he's uh, he's either run out of a shoe or he's hurt his left ankle. Threw a shoe, huh? <laughs> Second and 10, 15 seconds remain. Ball is at the Buckeye 30. Wilson to pass. Intercepted by Merrick. Merrick at the 25, the 30, tackled at the 36-yard line. There's that man again. He's absolutely got to be one of the, well, is there a better college linebacker? That's a, is that a statement or a question? I'll take it for a statement. I don't think there is, Marv. Both a question and a, <laughs> let's see. Oh, we got a clip Clipping there. penalty is called against Ohio State. Watch it again now. Boy, does he have plenty of time to set up. I'll tell you, right into the arms, though, of Marcus Merrick at about the 16, and he got it all the way out to the 28, but it's going to be taken back to where? The 14 on the clip. 14. Six seconds to play in this second quarter and uh, an awfully long way to go. Like 86 yards. <laughs> Kind of a long first half, too. Yes, yes. And it's, uh, we're going to need lights to get this ball game over. I brought my flashlight. <laughs> I hope you brought K-Rations. Placer gets the ball and just falls down. That'll end the first half. Clock runs down. That's it. So, with the first half coming to an end, the score is Ohio State 28, Illinois 7. We'll be right back with the start of the second half after this message. Ohio were today the, eight, the 76th Street home sellout crowd, but 87,952 fans are looking on. We're ready to start play in the third period. Ohio State leads Illinois 28 to 7 on an absolutely dazzling offensive display, spearheaded very much by quarterback Art Sleister. Well, he certainly has been magnificent. He completed his first 11 passes as the Buckeyes scored their first four possessions. Three of those completions went for touchdowns of so 43 yards to Gary Williams, eight yards to Doug Donnelly, and seven yards to tight end Brad Dwelly. But as we said, Art Schleister has just been dazzling. 11 in a row is a single game record. Bill Murkowski, uh, 19 years ago, uh, completed 12 in a row, but that was over two games, one of those games with another Illini team. But uh, the Buckeyes at least uh, have this one reasonably well in hand at halftime, 28 to seven, which would indicate that they're going to beat the Illini and win the Eli Buck trophy for the 13th consecutive year. And maybe, Marv, you can tell what the Eli Buck trophy is. <laughs> well, that's the wooden turtle that traditionally went to the winning team, and it involved two uh, honorary fraternities, Sachem at Illinois and Bucket and Dipper at Ohio State. There really was an Eli Buck back a number of years, but unfortunately, he or she, whomever, died in the transportation back and forth and now it's a wooden turtle well they could put those in a box and they uh, will not suffocate as we're ready for the second half kickoff mark bass will be kicking off to ohio state murray and spencer the deep men for the buckeyes there is the approach to kick by bass it's aimed at calvin murray who allows the ball to bounce picks it up at the five comes out to the 15 Reverses his field, tries to outrun a man to the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, and is hit at midfield. What a return by Calvin Murray. Beautiful, beautiful broken field running by the senior co-captain from Maryland, New Jersey. Watch him, Co. if we get it. Look at him now. He's looking his, setting up his blockers pretty well right here. Now he's cut to the west side lines, and he outruns this one. And he gets it down to the sidelines. Now watch him as he gets turns the corner here. He'll cut it right back to the middle of the field very quickly, cutting on a dime right there away from another man. Now he goes back to midfield, gets it across the 50-yard line. This is just a great, great kickoff return by Cal Murray, probably the best of the season. You see Tim Spencer, who was leading the block on that, coming off now with trainer Mike Bordner. Earl Bruce checks him as the Buckeyes go into action. Vaughn Broadnax now is in at the fullback position. Jimmy Gale is the eye back. Art Schleister is the quarterback. First and 10 at the 
48. The ball is given off to Gale, and Gale goes off right guard to the 45. Now, that's in Illinois territory. John Gillen, number 38, middle linebacker for the Illini, makes the tackle. Incidentally, in the first half, Marv, uh, Illinois had 12 first downs to 10 for the Buckeyes. They had 275 total yards to 259 for the Buckeyes, but OSU was productive on the scoreboard. Second and seven now at the 45 as Donnelly goes in motion. Slater to Spencer. Spencer slips the tackle and gets to the 42. Mark Butkus, and if that's a familiar name, it should be. This is the son of the great Illinois and Chicago Bear uh, uh, linebacker, it Dick Butkus. Hasn't been that long, has it? I believe you're right. Mark Butkus, 6'4", 229-pound freshman from Lansing, Illinois. Those first half statistics, Mar uh, Schleister was 11 of 13 for 213 yards, three touchdowns. Wilson, 20 of 32 for 277. Schleister to pass. It is caught by Gary Williams. He's at the 30. He's at the 26. Pulled down by John Gillen of Illinois. Schleister to Williams. There's that combination again. 17 yards. We take another look at Gary Williams. Just runs a straight route to the sidelines and now cuts it downfield as he gets the ball. Good throw right into his hands. Two hands on the ball. He slips this tackle and then goes back around the other way before the linebacker pulls him down at about the 25. First and 10 Buckeyes. Donnelly goes in motion to the right. There's a draw play to Murray. Hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped at the 26 by Tony Scarcelli. A sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number 95. The line I have been using a lot of six to five and six man defensive line. The Buckeyes haven't run too well against it. Cal Murray only had 20 yards and seven carries the first half. Jimmy Gale had 18 and two. Timmy Spencer had 11 and six. One of those a two yard touchdown. Second down and 10. Baker to pass, throws under pressure. Fought, touchdown, Doug Donnelly. Fleister to Donnelly and down goes Fleister. Boy, did he go down. What a beautiful throw on the run, under heat, great pressure, and Donnelly once again beat the free safety. Watch this, he fakes the handoff to Spencer. Now he has to run out of trouble. He gets sandwiched as he lets go of the ball. It's a wobbling pass, but it is right on the money, and Doug Donnelly goes the distance, 25-yard touchdown pass. So that's the fourth touchdown pass thrown by Schleister today. Tim Spencer scored the other one on a run from the two-yard line. Kievsky will be trying the extra point. Tom Orris holding. John Hutchings is the center. There's the kick by Anna Kievsky. It's high. It's good. With 12 minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the third period, the score is Ohio State 35, Illinois 7. Well, that's the fourth touchdown pass of the ball game, Marv, for Arch Leister. John Borton in 1952 had five touchdown passes against Washington State. Tony Crisello in 51 had four against Iowa. And, of course, Leister with four so far in this ball game today against the Illini. A rather impressive show. They went 48 yards in six plays just then, and, of course, the 25-yard touchdown pass. And Arch figures now... <laughs> Now go to 12 out of 14 for about 238 yards and four touchdowns. Florida upsetting Georgia at the moment. Well, and Georgia Tech is upsetting Notre Dame at the moment. Not a good day for Georgia. In fact, it hasn't been a good week for Georgia, has it? Uh, no, uh, you can say that again and again and again. Atha prepares to kick off for Ohio State. Deep men, Foster, Martin, Dentino for the Illini. Atha approaches and kicks it. Nice long one going deep into the end zone. Martin will down it. And the Illini will get it first and 10 at the orange and blue 20-yard line. Well, as we mentioned, uh, David Wilson, uh, while he only got seven points on the board, uh, 
He certainly put the ball in the air 32 times that first half. 20 completions, 277 yards. And he hit the big one, the 48-yarder, that set up the touchdown, of course. Two wide receivers to opposite sides. Lopez to the left, then Tino to the right. The backs this time are in an eye. Draw play. Ball given to Curtis. Big hole up the middle. Big hole. Bumps into his own blocker and is stopped at the 34. First down, Illinois. Then Skillings came up from came up from the secondary, but the thing that actually stopped the play was when Curtis bumped into his downfield blocker. This time it's Martin to the right for the Illini. Back to passes. Wilson has time. Throws it over the middle. Drop by Sherrod. Right on target, but Sherrod dropped the ball. Incomplete. He had uh, nobody on him. Uh, Marcus Merrick had dropped back uh, deep on uh, the linebacker uh, coverage underneath, and uh, he just flat dropped the ball. Second down and 10. Ball comes back to the Illinois 34 yard line. Sean Gale comes in now to give Ohio State another defensive back. Wilson studies the defense. Back to pass. Throws a floater upfield. It is batted down. Incomplete. The, de the intended receiver, Dentino, had beaten Skillings. But Wilson's ball sort of hung in the air, just didn't have any zip to it, and that enabled Skillings to get back and sort of tip it away. Dentino indeed was behind Vince Skillings on that one, and uh, that was probably as poor a throw as uh, David Wilson uh, has launched so far because it was a floater. Third down and 10 now, possession play for the Illini, and Ohio State calls timeout. Buckeyes want to talk things over although it is kind of an unusual spot for a timeout. Well, I think uh, Chris Ream was over talking with Frizzell, and now Marcus Merrick, who calls those linebacking signals, is there. And one of the things they're probably going to start telling uh, Vince to do is not let the man Dentino get behind him. You see Marcus there and uh, Chris in the discussion with the defensive coordinator. This is an absolutely incredible transition that Illinois has made because this was a team that last year did not pass, did not want to pass, and I suppose you would say could not pass. Yet in one year, with a new coaching regime, it is now a totally pass-oriented team. Well, and a new quarterback. Of course, uh, the kid from Fullerton, California, grew up throwing, and uh, he threw where he was an All-American. Uh, junior college performer and uh, he knew Mike White's system and Mike White uh, is very much pass oriented no question about that third down and 10 possession play Illinois ball at the Illini 34 back to passes Wilson has all the time in the world little check off pass goes to Thomas Thomas gets it downfield and goes out of bounds near midfield they're going to mark it at the 49. First down, Illinois. Little checkoff pass in the left flat to Thomas, and he wasn't covered. Right, there was a three-man rush then by the Buckeyes. They didn't put any heat on him, so he just throws the little dumper. And Thomas is a pretty good runner on the head of steam. He gets away from Al Washington there before he's run out of bounds at the 49-yard line. 15 yards on that game. First and 10 Illini, ball at the Illinois 49. Draw play to Curtis up the middle, goes nowhere. Stop hole by Foster and by Epitropolis. Jerome Foster 55, John Epitropolis 33. Well, they've used that draw. They did it on the first play of the game. They did it on the first play of the second half. Both times picked up a little yardage. We see Sleister now at the Buckeye bench. But uh, basically, this team comes to throw, and boy, they can burn you. Lopez to left for the Illini. Dentino to the right. A fine pair of wide receivers. Back to passes. Wilson has the time. Rifles the ball to the sideline. It's caught by John Lopez, who went right up over Ray Ellis. Dandy catch by Lopez. Well, watch. This time they had double coverage on Dentino on the other side, so he goes to the east sideline. It's a fine leaping catch by Lopez. 
And there he is, the first down. He gets the chuck from Ray Ellis now, but Ray's right on him. That's not bad coverage, except it's well-timed, and he goes up in the air and gets it at the Buckeye 39. First and 10 line eye. Wilson to pass. The blitz is on. Pass is thrown. It is caught. And touchdown, Illinois. Lee Bakey. Ohio State tried a safety blitz, and did they get burned? There wasn't anybody back there, and Wilson just hung it out to Bakey. Bakey caught it and went Doesn't over the score. Watch this. The blitz did come in, but boy, he stood right in there and threw it over to Bakey, and he beats Gorley and plows his way into the end zone. A 39-yard touchdown pass, 80 yards in eight plays, mostly the arm of David Wilson. Well, Ohio State secondary is getting a real lesson in pass defense today. A real sun. They're getting burned, and the sun is just hardly showing at all. Maybe it's a good thing Art Sleister is incredibly sharp. 35 to 13, Bass in to try the extra point. It is set down. The kick is blocked. Looked like Vince Killings blocked it. I think it was Vince coming from the left side. It exploded in there. Bobby Murphy wound up with the ball, but I think Vince is the one who blocked it. So with 11 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the third period, the score is Ohio State 35, Illinois 13. As Dave Wilson, the talented Illinois quarterback, and he is talented, and he is good, put that ball right on the money as he eluded the safety blitz and Ohio State got caught with nobody deep, and Illinois burned them. He is 23 out of 37 for 342 yards as we see this big 39-yarder all over again, and the big end takes it in there. A beautiful play all the way. And you're right, Marv, the Buckeyes got a... They knew they were going to get a defensive secondary test, and they are not passing it too well, as a matter of fact. They're not passing it nearly as well as David Wilson. will be kicking off for Illinois as Murray and Spencer are the two deep men for Ohio State. Spencer on the near side, Murray on the far side. Sun trying again to come through in a rather feeble effort thus far. There's the approach by Bass and the kick. Spencer at the six, doubles it. Comes to the Out. 20, 25, 30, and almost broke it. That one formed beautifully right up the middle. He had, uh, well, the flying wedge was illegal years and years ago, but he had one that certainly looked like it then. And Tim went right up the middle and got tripped up at the 34, but a good return. Good return by Tim Spencer from the 6 to the 34 at his first and 10 Ohio State at that point. To the left is Gary Williams. To the right is Doug Donnelly. Quite a talented pair. And in with Sleister, that makes a talented duo, trio. Quick pass thrown, caught in by Donnelly, and he's dropped at the 43. A little bit short of a first down. Now they mark it 42. Sleister to Donnelly. If this game gets over before dark, Marv, it's going to look like Brigham Young and Utah State or something, 83 to 77 a couple of weeks ago, boy, because they are just piling up the yards through the air. It's 248 now for Art, 14 out of 16. And, of course, Wilson's over 300. Generally, the pass blocking has been excellent by both teams. There is Murray trying the right side and getting it out to the 46. Calvin Murray carrying, and Rick George makes the stop for the Illini. Cal's having a first time, though, trying to get the 91 yard or 99 yards he needs to get to the 1,000. Uh, he only had 20 in the first half. He did get four more there. Brad Dwelly reports in at tight end for John Frank. Five-man front for Illinois. Donnelly in motion to the left. Slaster to Murray. Murray eludes a tackler and is tackled at the 48. Dwyer and Gillen catching. Well, for all of Art's passing, they're not loosening up that uh, Illinois five-man line. They stay right there at home. Uh, which is one of the reasons I'm sure that Art can throw so well, but uh, they're not going to let the Buckeyes run. And now we see the Ohio State uh, cheerleaders there. They don't look extremely ecstatic, but they look awfully exotic. 
there's the sun, Marv. Second down and nine at the 48. Placer. And a quick hand. Oh, there's a fumble in the backfield, and I think Illinois got it. Mix up in the backfield. Too bad Tim Spencer didn't have that. He blew right through the middle all alone, and nobody touched him. But uh, that play just looked like it backfired all the way. And that's the Buckeyes. There's the replay again now. And the ball is just floating around there loose. Art makes a mad dive for it and misses it. The Buckeyes, until then, had only had 11 turnovers all year, and they led the nation in that department. Only four fumbles. That's the fifth, of course, they lost. Tab Carmine fell on the ball for the Illini. First and 10 Illinois' ball at the Buckeye 42. Wilson on a quick handoff to Curtis on a slant play, and Curtis gets it to the 37. Quick hitting play with Curtis carrying. Merrick and Ferguson make the stop for Ohio State. Merrick number 36, Ferguson number 65. Second down, five at the Buckeye 37. To the left is Dentino. Curtis starts in motion left. Wilson to pass. Throws. Incomplete. Lopez, the intended receiver, incomplete. That's just a bad throw because he threw it right behind the man, wide open. Uh, they're certainly finding the seams in the Buckeye defense, whether they're in the man or the zone. They get the men open. And that's one of the very, very few times but David Wilson's been very far off target. Third down and five now. Balls at the Ohio State 37 with eight minutes and 51 seconds left in the third period. Wilson to Bakey. He's got it. First down, Illinois. Tackle has made it to 24. Epitropolis and then Gorley coming up from the secondary. So the Illini get a first down on a pass from Wilson to Bakey. There are two Bakeys. Matter of fact, they're twins. Greg is the center. Lee is the tight end. Curtis off the right side. Gets away from one man and gets it down to about the 17. Good effort by little Joe Curtis, a junior from Chicago. One of the Buckeyes, Gorley, getting up very slowly. Curtis just ran right over him. Pretty good run by... Joe Curtis. Well, you don't want to give this Illinois team the ball in this kind of position because they can move it. Dentino to the left, Benson to the right. Ohio State ships its defense, second and three at the 17. There is Thomas getting very little yardage. At that, he might be inside the 15. Keith Ferguson stopped the play. They rule the progress to the 14. So it is third down for the Illini and one. A new tight end, Sherrod, a new wide receiver, Martin, report in for the Illini. Dentino and Benson go out. Now Ohio State's going to get caught with a timeout. And the substitute got in too late. And Earl wants to know why. Now Earl is hot. mad. He's down there talking to Denny and he wants to know why he sent Eccles in that late after the uh, Illini had already made substitutions and it so it cost the Buckeyes a timeout. So the clock stops at seven minutes and 26 seconds here in the third period. Ohio State is leading 35 to 13 as Buckeye quarterback Art Schleister is some, uh, what is it, 12 for 14, is that it? And he's thrown four touchdown passes. That's correct. He's thrown four touchdowns. He's 14 out of 16 for 248 yards. He is having an afternoon, but the Buckeye defense, particularly the secondary, is not. They are getting picked apart by David uh, Wilson, who is also having himself quite a day. The one thing that puzzles me is I don't understand why the Buckeyes can't at least get to Wilson once. They haven't gotten in on him at all. Uh, the, certainly credits a great blocking of the Illini line, but the Buckeyes have not come with the corner blitz at all. They've come up the middle a couple times. Third down and one. Tight formation. Wilson on a quarterback sneak is piled up right around the 13 and a half yard line, and that's where he needs to go for a first down. So we'll just wait for the officials to spot the ball. 
big pile up there. Whole middle of the Ohio State line was in stop the play. They had a seven man line knowing that Wilson was going to do that and they are going to call for the change. The worthy official sat the ball down. It does not appear that they have the first down because it is resting virtually at the 14 yard line. They needed to go at the 13 and a half to get the first down. But they there there the length of the ball from making it right. Ray Ellis and uh, Keith Ferguson of course taking a close look. But it comes up fourth down and now uh, a ball to go. Fourth down and inches. Fourth down. Probably less than a foot to go for a first down. Line of scrimmage the Ohio State 14 yard line. Again Illinois comes out in a tight running formation. Calvin oh. Thomas is the fullback. He's a big fella, 234 pounds, but they don't run him very much. Strong, though. He's very strong. Wilson. On a long count, and there is contact. Mark Sullivan may have jumped offside. That's what they wanted. Probably an irregular count there, and they're going to call offside against Ohio State, and that will be a first down for the oh. Illini. Buckeyes were over eager and jumped offside. And that is there getting it is. the Mark Sullivan is the one who did jump. Uh, and you can't blame him. He, David Wilson gives him the long count, but out of the long count and Mark's jump, they gained the 17th first down of the ball game. Illinois comes out of the huddle now. First and goal at the nine yard line. He's the defense, drops back to pass, throws it in the flat. Beautiful catch, and now it's ruled incomplete. We're going to roll it incomplete. Fine play by uh, Alvin Washington, covering the receiver, but also coming in from the backside, rushing uh, was uh, Keith Ferguson, number 65. He didn't cause the ball to be thrown poorly. Al Washington did a nice job, though, of covering over there. Look for an instant as though Thomas did indeed have the ball. Well, we've had a couple of those today, haven't we? Yes, we have. I guess you always do in a passing game. Uh, really, these games are tough to officiate. Oh. Thankless job, and you've got to make the decision right now, and you can't say, let's replay it. Benson to the left, then Pino in the left slot. As Illinois overloads the left side, second and goal at the nine. Wilson passing. It is caught. Touchdown. Greg Dentino whipped one of the Buckeyes over there and uh, goes in to score. Boy, that's quick release. Look at Dentino putting a spin on the ball, and David Wilson uh, congratulates him. And he just rolls out to his left, gets fine, fine blocking. Dentino simply beat Bobby Murphy. That's 43 yards in nine plays, and of course, the eight yard touchdown pass, and Dentino holds the ball up. And uh, Coach Mike White is obviously quite pleased about it. That is the second touchdown pass that Dentino has caught. At that, I think the first one was more spectacular. That's nothing wrong with this one. 35 to 19. Illinois is going for two on the extra point. Might as well throw it. There's the pass. It is caught. Two points. Ridiculously easy to Joe Curtis who just uh, went out in the right flat and there wasn't anybody covering it. And so with uh, six minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the third quarter, the score is Ohio State 35, Illinois 21. And that, Marv, is the folly of the air, the turnover, the fumble on the handoff with Arch Schleister. And uh, the Illini got the ball, and in, 40, in nine plays, they go 43 yards, and you just do not give David Wilson time or room because he'll butcher you. Well, Wilson is getting a lot of time and he too is very accurate and he will take you apart. The Illini, Marv, in uh, uh, the last four possessions have scored three touchdowns and were stopped the other time at the Ohio 30 by Marcus Merrick's interception. Otherwise, nothing has stopped them. Their, their pass offense is just absolutely there's the two-point play you see Curtis coming out in the right flat and catching it virtually uncovered and as you said ridiculously I doubt it. Bass 
will be the kicker, and he kicks deep. A bouncer that is fumbled by Ohio State and then pounced on by John Frank at the 24. One of those low bounding kicks, very difficult to handle. Myers it was who pounced on the ball. And Ohio State will get it first and 10 at the Buckeye 24 yard line with six minutes, 39 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Wide to the left is Doug Donnelly. Wide to the right is Gary Williams. Sleister hands off to Spencer. Spencer gets, oh, maybe two yards. John Benagoni is there to get him at the 26. Let's call it a yard. It's a long yard. Second down and nine. Line of scrimmage is just beyond the 25-yard line in Ohio State territory. Illinois had 12 men on the field, but the 12th one now gets off. Slayster, options to the right, got a hole, takes it, gets a good gain, got to the 35 and dropped the football, but he was out of bounds. Well, that's the first time we've seen Art run the option today, and he may have to do a little bit more of that to loosen up that five and six man uh, Illini line uh, because they are not permitting the Buckeyes to run. There's a flag on the play K back at the 29 yard line. This will probably be against Ohio State. Normally in that position it's a clipping penalty or a holding penalty. Well Art got almost first down. I think he had uh, nine yards and uh, 33 inches but uh, you can go for that now. Goes for not. The penalty is Crept up on the Buckeyes again. Holding penalty called against Ohio State nullifies the gain and takes the Buckeyes back to their own 14-yard line. So Ohio State is not in good field position, and it is second down and 20. Donnelly and Williams line up to the right. Cedric Anderson comes into the left, so there are three quick receivers in there. Sleister dropping back to pass. The rush is on. Down goes Sleister. He was blasted. Carmine. Tab Carmine got in around behind a Buckeye blocker who just didn't pick him up. Watch it again here now. The, the blocking does break down on uh, Art on this one. He starts to throw and he doesn't. And he got it right in the middle of the back by Carmine. And that is clear back on the seven yard line. And that is how you lose quarterbacks. And football games. This one is certainly not tucked away. Third down, 26, back at the seven. Draw play to Murray. Murray, a big hole up the middle to the 20. And can't get away from one man. Pull down at the 23. Good gain by Murray, but at that, they're still about where the original series began. That's exactly right. They've got it back out to the 24, so they've done a lot of uh, business to go nowhere. Tom Orris will be called upon to kick fourth down and 10 the line of scrimmage the Buckeye 24 with Dentino and Martin the two deep men for the Illini and it's interesting both Dentino and Martin are wide receivers. There's the kick by Orris a nice one going upfield it'll be taken by Martin at the 35 he's at the 40 45 midfield down to the Buckeye 48 and the Illini come fighting back here. They are getting to be very offensive. There's a flag down at midfield. Personal foul is called against Ohio State, so this will be a big, costly 15-yard penalty from that point. So now Ohio is in deep trouble. They're going to move it all the way down to the Buckeye 34, and it is first and 10 for the Illini. And look at Earl Bruce on the sidelines. He really hasn't changed his posture from the time they were ahead 21 to nothing, but uh, I'm sure there are a few things going through his mind. First and 10 Illini. Line of scrimmage, the Ohio State 34. The nickel defense is in there for Ohio State. David Wilson 
Goes back to pass, throws a little quickie. It is caught by Curtis, who falls at the 30. No tackle made. Gain is to the Buckeye 30, a pickup of four, second and six. The Illini simply build a fence around David Wilson. He is an untouchable as far as the Buckeye pass rush is concerned. Wilson again passing over the middle, caught by Dentino, and he's thrown to the ground by Vince Kelly. This will be close to a first down, if not a first down. We'll see where they mark it easily. It's at the 23, first down Illini. First and 10 Illinois at the Buckeye 23. Wilson over the middle, drops. Well, that's been the best Buckeye defense up to now, the drop pass. Lopez was open, but for some reason just didn't handle the ball. It did not appear to be that difficult to pass. Second and 10. Lopez to the left, then Pino to the right. There's a talented pair there. Wilson to pass. It is caught by Curtis, I believe, and Epitropolis is there to get him. He juggled that one, Marv. That was almost dropped. Play is ruled dead at the Ohio State 19, so it is third down and six to go. Again, Lopez to the left, then Tino to the right. Three-man line for Ohio State. And contact is made again. Flags go down. That's Mark Sullivan making contact with the center. So uh, instead of third and six, it's going to be third and one. And the penalty again is the bugaboo for the Bucks. As you get burned by the pass, there is a tendency to become over eager in the line, and that's what's happened to Ohio State. Buckeye so anxious to try to get the Wilson, jumped the gun and made contact. Third down and now one at the Buckeye 14. Illinois right back in this football game. They're going for still another score. They go for a pass here. Wilson passing over the middle incomplete. They faked the uh, dive play, and then Wilson straightened up, threw over the middle to Martin, but overthrew him incomplete. Fourth down and one. Now this brings up a possession situation. says to Dennis, what is the call here? Three minutes left in the third quarter. Fourth down and one. There is Curtis. He appears to have it, but let's see. Epitropolis made the tackle. Ellis doesn't think he made it. He's coming off the field saying they're short, but I think Curtis made it. He did a nice job of individual running on that one. They're going to call for the chain. But he went without blocking on that play and did a little dance around left end, and I think the dance was just enough for the first down. First down, Illini. And now Illinois has it at the Ohio State 13-yard line with two minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the third period. The Buckeye offense just cannot get their hands on the football. And that's because the Buckeye defense cannot stop the Illini. Wilson. Throwing. Caught by Martin. Touchdown. And he just plain beat. Uh, who is it? Vince Skillings. Vince Skillings. Vince Skillings. Martin is hurt. One on one, and Illinois' Martin beats Skillings for the touchdown. And they're Illinois. carrying Martin off the field now, Marv. Uh, he has apparently hurt his leg. That's about the third time he's done this. Watch it from the ground camera here now. Really no heat at all on David Wilson. He finds his man, and it's a great catch as he very easily beat Vince Skillings. And as he rolls over, he's hurt on the play. 
Now they set him down on about the seven yard line to take a closer look. But that one was as ridiculously easy as the two point uh, conversion pass a moment ago. And the Illini are making this some kind of a ball game. 34 yards in seven plays they went there. David Wilson of Illinois is just slicing up the Ohio State secondary. But of course, one of the reasons is that the Buckeyes cannot get any pressure on Wilson. As uh, I don't know whether it's the superior line blocking by the Illini or whether the Buckeye pass rush is ineffective or both. But well, be that as it may, Wilson is getting the job done. The Buckeye pass rush indeed is ineffective because they are not getting to Wilson. They are really not even making him throw off balance or in too much of a hurry. That's three touchdown passes this half in three possessions for the Illini. Illinois now appears to be going for one. Bass will be kicking. It is set down. Bass kicks it. It's right through there. With two minutes and 31 seconds left in the third period, we have a brand new football game. Ohio State 35, Illinois 28. It was 35 to 7 at one time, but uh, look at here. We see it on the replay now. I watched David Wilson just take his ordinary drop, and he puts the ball right on the money to Martin. This wrapped him up, and there's the touchdown now again on the ground view. And it's just a, it's just a perfectly executed play with no no heat on it. And so, from a 35 to 7 deficit, the Illini have scored three in a row and uh, answered the Buckeyes in kind. And this is some kind of a football game now. We've had 63 points scored, and we haven't even played three quarters. <laughs> Turn on the lights. Mother, I won't be home for supper. Wilson is 30 out of 47 for 392 yards. And four touchdown passes. 87,952 fans looking on. And they have seen a lot of action. Nobody's going home. You notice that? I do. The girl might be ready. Bass gets a low bounding kick, which is picked up by uh, Frank at the 20s. At the 25, is down to the 29. Might have been. Is that Nick Miller? Oh, I think that was uh, Frank, the freshman tight end. One is 89, and the other is 99. But it'll be Ohio State's ball first and ten at the Buckeye 30, regardless. And now it behooves the Buckeye offense to move the football. Our man Herb Hohenstein on the sideline says that Keith Ferguson has a slight ankle sprain, and we may not see him anymore today. First and ten at the 30. Two wide receivers to the right side of the field. They options to the short side and goes very little. Tackle at about the 32 or 3, short side option. You know, Marv, uh, this wounded Illinois football team has stopped the Buckeyes on five of their last six possessions, or I should say maybe the Buckeyes have stopped themselves because the fumble after they led 35 to 7 is the thing that really took the Buckeyes momentum away from them. Man front for Illinois. Sleister goes back to pass. The rush is on. The bomb is thrown down the middle. Dropped by John Frank. Right in his arms, and he dropped the football. Well, you can't throw it any better than that. Boy, and did Art get kissed after he let the ball go? He's putting himself back together now. But he really got nailed as he let the ball fly. And that is a perfect throw. Right on the money to John Frank, and he should have had it. Very frankly, Illinois' pass protection has been better than Ohio State's. The Illini have gotten to Sleister on several occasions. Buckeyes have just not been able to get to David Wilson. Third down and seven. This brings up a possession play. Line of scrimmage to the Ohio State 33 as Donnelly goes in motion. 
Feaster fakes the draw, goes back to pass, is in trouble, bumps into his own man and is caught for a loss. And look at the jubilation on the Illini sideline. They are going uh, bonkers over there. Mike White is cheering them on, and they have done an excellent job of stopping the Buckeyes again. And so now they're forced to punt from their own uh, 26. Tom Orris back to kick. It is fourth and 14. Boy, the Buckeye offense didn't have the ball very long, did they? Morris gets a good pass from center, steps into the ball, and boots it downfield. Dentino takes it at the Illinois 35, bubbles the ball. by Glenn Cobb. No, Cobb fell on the ball. Well, that's the only thing that's been saving the Buckeyes. Four turnovers for the Illini. Got them in business. Here we see it again. He just plain drops the ball as he's being the Buckeyes bear down on him. Uh, Jimmy Gale, I think, is the one who hits him. And now watch Cobb cradle the ball in his arms. And there is the best gainer the Buckeyes have had in some long period. First and 10 Ohio State, the line of scrimmage, the Illinois 27-yard line. Illinois has really shut down Ohio State here in the second half other than that first drive. There's the quick handoff to an Ohio State back who bumps his way down to the 20, and it's Tim Spencer. Mark Butkus finally uh, stops the play, but Butkus was trying to get to Spencer and fight off two Buckeye blockers at the same time. Seven-yard gain, second and three. Line of scrimmage, the Illinois 20-yard line. We're still in the third quarter, 28 seconds left. Almost Sunday. <laughs> there is Spencer getting very little. Jack Squarek grabs him and throws him back. Wasn't much blocking there for Spencer, to tell the truth. Clock running down, that'll probably be the end of the third quarter, but we have 15 minutes of action-packed football remaining. That's it. The clock runs out. That's the end of the third quarter. The score is Ohio State 35, Illinois 28. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter right after this message. Like anything else in the 1980s, research is a victim of inflation, but remains an essential pursuit. At Ohio State University, awards for research and other sponsored programs amounted to more than $63 million in fiscal year 1979. That research was conducted in more than 125 academic fields. While many programs are funded through the federal government, support is also provided by corporations, foundations, and other nonprofit agencies. For example, through money provided by the Heart Association, numerous grant and aids are funded breaking new ground in the research of coronary heart disease, stroke, hypertension, and rheumatic heart disease. Through the humane use of laboratory animals, researchers can probe for the answers that will ultimately benefit human research. That's just one of many examples how Ohio State is serving you. Down and three, the line of scrimmage, the Illinois 19. Sleister rolls to the left, going to keep the ball. A flag is down. Sleister has a first down with room to spare, but keep in mind a flag is down. And that usually means holding on a play like this. And Cal Murray was out there leading the block, and they are coming back. Ohio State has been a very careless team this year on penalties. And here is another example. Sleister had the first down. That's seven yards, Mar. And the penalty is against Ohio State, and it's a big one. 15-yard penalty. <laughs> to hold. Holding. Called against Ohio State. Hart had the first down. Uh, he was down to the 12-yard line, as a matter of fact. Instead, the Buckeyes are back on the 35, and the penalty has been pressured. Now it is third down and 17. Ohio State has drawn some really serious penalties the second half. Sleaster to pass. Going to have to run with it. Gets away from one tackler. Gets to the 30. Tries to stiff arm. Can't, and a flag is down. 
Now that could be against Illinois. That could be a face mask. Uh, now, now they're having a little uh, altercation over there. And Squarek, Luther Henson runs in there, and that'll end in a hurry. And Arch pointing at the penalty face of mask. Face mask is called against the Illini. And that's ironic because they had Sleister down. Well, that may have been the reason. <laughs> well, this is not a, uh, an incidental thing, is it? Well, there's a 15-yard face mask penalty called against the Illini. First down, Marv. It's a very costly penalty against the Illini there. Two teams may be getting a little over eager now. First and ten, line of scrimmage is the Illinois 16 yard line. Donnelly in motion to the right. Leister rolls left, gets a block, and is belted out of bounds around the 13 yard line by John Gillen. Gillen, by the way, has played very well defensively for the Illini. He's the outstanding man on the field defensively for the Orange and Blue. Now, Cal Murray did a nice job blocking Rick George, who's also been a pain in the Buckeye offense. Uh, and Cal did a good job so that uh, Hart could get around the corner and uh, picked up four yards instead of losing. Second down and seven at the 13. We've just started play in the fourth quarter. Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Placer pitches back to Murray at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Calvin Murray. Option play right. And, and the crowd breathes a little easier, and uh, the Buckeyes are down there congratulating Cal Murray because that was an excellent run. The Buckeyes really have not run a whole lot in, in this ball game. The Illini defense has been set to stop the run. They decided to let Art have the air. He did a good job with it. But on this particular run, a 13-yard run, Art just options down the line, fakes the handoff to Spencer, and now flips it quickly to Cal Murray, number 43, fakes inside, goes wide again now, and he goes the 13 yards for the touchdown. Another look at it from the ground. Now watch Art quickly flick it out there. Very well handled by Cal Murray, and a beautiful cut there. Two cuts back in. He does the Z pattern, and is he happy? Anakievsky trying the extra point. Tom Orris holding. Good pass from center. Anakievsky's kick is high and good. 14 minutes, 23 seconds left in this football game. It's Ohio State 42, Illinois 28. Well, that time, the Buckeyes capitalized on an Illinois fumble. Penalties appeared to be destroying Ohio State, but then Illinois got a 15-yard face mask penalty, and then Ohio State went in to score on an option play to the right from Sleister to Murray. A couple of offsetting ugly penalties as we watch Brutus uh, do his little uh, two-step, but uh, the penalties did uh, indeed offset one another, and uh, Cal Murray uh, had the speed and the desire to get it into the end zone and did a job. One more look at it as Cal Murray Gets the pitch from Art, and tucks the ball away, fakes left, fakes right, goes back in, and now jubilantly throws the arms up. Marv, believe it or not, the Illini have had 13 more plays than Ohio State has had in this ball game so far. Unofficially, they've got 66 plays for 420 yards. Ohio, 53 plays for 425 yards. We got a quarter to go, and we've had 850 yards. And now, 70 points. At 70 points. There is the approach by Atha, another high one carrying downfield. Martin will take it at the two. Angles to the 10, to the 15, upset at the 17. Nick Miller was downfield to get him along with Mike DeAndrea. Well, folks, if you like offense, you got it here today. <laughs> we haven't seen one of these since Southern Methodist came to town a couple of years, a few years back. The only frightening thing is it's going to get dark and Ohio State doesn't have lights. Well, they got a small bank. They'll have to play it all in the middle of the field. I need, I need small. <laughs> Back to pass. Over the middle, it is incomplete. 
Martin, the intended receiver, broken up by Marcus Murray. Your man. Watch, uh, there's Martin on the isolated camera, and watch Marcus Merrick come into the picture right there. Marcus almost has the interception. I think he had more of his hands on the ball than Martin did. Yes, he nearly picked that one off. Second and 10 of the 17. That's the 18th incompletion for that man, but he's had 30 completed. Dave Wilson studies the shifting defense. Goes back to pass, gets beautiful protection. Unbelievable protection. Throws the bomb upfield incomplete. Buckeyes only had a four-man rush then, though, Marvin. It is easy to protect when you're only running three and four men in there. And still, Mark Sullivan almost got to him, and I think he made him finally throw the ball up in desperation. Those are the kind you can pick off, and Mike White on the sidelines knows it as he sends in the next play. Now this one is important. The Buckeyes are leading 42 to 28. It's third and 10. The Illinois is back deep, and the Buckeyes got to get the football now. Hey, do you suppose Illinois will go to the air? Is there another? Is there another avenue? Third down and 10 at the 17. Wilson to pass. Throws it. Caught by Martin at the 30. Eludes the tackler. Tackled at the 34. First down, Illini. That was a big play. Buckeyes dropped seven men back then. Rushed only, only four. And watch it. Martin still has... I mean, uh, Wilson has plenty of time. That's the 23rd first down as he gets it across the 30. A good, good play by Martin. Now you see the out there all by himself just begging for the football. And Wilson obliges. There's the draw play to Curtis. Curtis runs right up the middle. Almost broke it. And it gets to midfield. Dandy run by Joe Curtis. Keith Ferguson tripped him up. Well, back come the Illini to the surprise of no one. Boy, this Buckeye defense is just getting chopped up. It's become a sieve. 24 first downs for the visitors. Back to pass is Wilson, throws over the middle, caught beautifully by Lee Bakey, and Bakey's down to the 30. And again, no heat on David Wilson. Bakey pulls his socks back up, and he's a big, big tight end. Did the job. In fact, it's almost at the 29. First down for the Illini. They have the ball just inside. Uh-oh, here's a penalty against Ohio State. It's got to be a... Roughing the board. passer. I didn't know anybody was close enough to Wilson to roughing. Well, that's why they called it, apparently. That's 90 yards in penalties against the Buckeyes. And that leaves a lot to be desired in itself. First and 10, line of scrimmage to 15. Wilson on a draw play to Thomas, caught by Tony Magero. Magero got through there and tripped him up. Good defensive play. We've just had some outstanding spotting today by Tim Johnson and by Jim Barry. This is a very difficult game to spot. Well, you see Tony Magero uh, limping out. He got jammed on the play, but he did stop it for no game. Second down and nine at the 14. Flip back formation. Wilson straightens up, throws the pass in the flat, caught! And out of bounds goes John Lopez at the four. First down, I'll bet. Looks like he went out of bounds at the four, and that should be a first down. Look at the time he's got to throw. The man couldn't be more wide open. He turns it down just enough to get it inside the four-yard line. It's almost to the three. It is a first down. This may be the longest football game of the 20th century. Oh, 12 minutes and 29 seconds remain. We've had 70 points scored. Nowhere near the end, I suspect. It's 42 to 28. Ohio State leading, but Illinois is first and goal at the four. So the Illini in golden position to score. Curtis with the ball gets to the two and a half yard line. 
Rod Gorley and Marcus Mary moved in to make the stop. Can't imagine why they didn't just run the two-point conversion pass play there. Gorley appears to be hurt for Ohio State. Clock stops at 12-12, uh, and one of the Buckeye trainers, Billy Hill, runs out to look at him. Umpire Dan Davey called him out. They have marked the ball at the two-and-a-half yard line. It is second down and goal at the two-and-a-half. 42 for Ohio State, 28 for Illinois, but don't you move because that score will soon change. Reggie Eccles reports in for Ohio State. Our guys will go into a goal line defense now. Dentino goes in motion to the right. Wilson rolling right, may pass, may run, throws it, caught. It is touchdown, Illinois. Touchdown. For the Illini over at the far side, Skillings was defending, but he just couldn't get to the Illinois pass receiver. Just a roll out here. I think David Wilson would run it in if he could, but he sees the man so open that he just flipped him the football, and in he goes for the touchdown. A little uh, flip to Greg Foster, and they go the last three or two yards very easily. A little surprising. Illinois is going to try a kick here. Well, at least they're lined up to do that. Bass will be attempting the kick. It is set down. Bass kicks it. It's high. It's good. With 11 minutes and 49 seconds remaining in this football game, the score is Ohio State 42, Illinois 35. So this extremely well-conceived Illinois passing attack that gives super support to quarterback David Wilson, but at the same time seems to be able to get so many receivers downfield has just thoroughly taken the Ohio State defense apart. And you know in doing it, it could well be that the Buckeyes are now becoming a little bit demoralized. Well, they certainly should be because the Illini have scored touchdowns on five of their last seven possessions. And really, the only time that they were stopped were on an interception by Marcus Merrick and then the fumble punt by Dentino. And the rest of the time, there's no stopping this team. And the Buckeyes certainly haven't even looked like it. No heat at all with a four-man, a three-man rush on David Wilson. And so he stands back there and, as you say, Marv, picks them apart. So we still have almost a full quarter to play. <laughs> We've got 77 points on the scoreboard. And I don't know, can that thing go into triple figures? Well, we've never seen it, that's for sure, but there's a first time. I guess forever. stick around. Yeah, right. 83 yards, and he did it in nine plays. So there's a time. I expect there's time to score four or five more touchdowns. Oh, at least. <laughs> Bass will be kicking off for the Illini. There's the approach. There's the kick. A low one down at Cal Murray at the goal line. Murray goes to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, tackled at the 28. Ohio State gets it first and 10 at the 28. I think Rocky Thompson tells me that David Wilson has now set a Big Ten single, seat, single game passing record with 442 yards and he's got five touchdown passes. Well, he's put on a show, no doubt about it. Line of scrimmage at the 28-yard line as Donnelly goes in motion to the right. Seister options to the left. Gets a good block, and it is run out of bounds. Oh, and they just plowed one of the... Oh, one of the... Uh electronic men on the sidelines and knocked him right on the track. Cal Murray leading the block for hard on the option run. And that went almost nowhere. So it is a yard gain from the 28 to the 29, second down and nine. Illinois has just done an excellent job of shutting down the Buckeye ground game. Seaster goes back to pass. 
throws upfield. It is caught by Calvin Murray, and he's out of bounds, but short of a first down. Murray went out of bounds at the 35. This brings up a third down situation. It's one that the Buckeyes had best cash in on because they don't want to let the line I have the football. No, point one, the Buckeye defense is worn out. And point two, the Buckeye defense has not been able to stop Illinois. Other than that, I guess it doesn't make much difference. Skip point three, then. <laughs> Third down and four at the 35. Donnelly in motion to the right. Draw play to Murray, and he will not get it, not even come remotely close. Stopped at the 36. He might have fumbled the ball. Flag is down. Uh-oh. Now, uh, let's see what this is. Illinois sure had stopped the play, but you know they've committed a penalty. Very, very. Oh, and look at Mike White on the sidelines. Is he storming? He would like an explanation of that one, please. Now tell me about it. <laughs> There's the official trying to explain. Oh, is this a costly penalty? Very, very costly penalty. Very careless penalty for the Illini because they had Ohio State stopped and they would have forced the Buckeyes to kick. And the personal foul called against the Illini. So instead of a punt, the Buckeyes are now in Illinois territory at the 49-yard line, first down. Placer rolling right, throws the quick pass in the flat, caught by Donnelly, gets away. No, he can't get away. Brought down on the shoe tops at the 40-yard line. Placer to Donnelly, that is a nine-yard gain, just short of a first down. Doug gave it to good effort, though. He spun around away from the one tackler and... Uh, then almost got speared by the next one. That isn't the first down. They're taking a close look at it, but it's going to be, I believe, inches short. They're not going to even measure because he has to get to the 39-yard line. This is a good down, Mar. something you can have fun with. Second and inches. Second down, short of a yard to go. Slayster going to pass, going to have some fun. Goes the bomb downfield. Watch it. It is. Interference on Illinois. Not much doubt about that. Ooh, and it's George having a fit. Rick George is just steaming and storming down there. Number six thought he did a good job. Look at him. We're going to have another look at it here. You judge this one now. What do you think? Good arm by Art. The ball's right on the money. Who interfered with whom? Oh, that's interference. Yeah. Difficult. At any rate, they call it interference. And it's a first down on the four. Now they're going to go half the distance. Well, there's going to be that, a personal There's foul. another penalty. Uh, now, wait a minute. Oh, a non-contact foul, whatever that is. Well, at any rate, they're down on about the two and a half. Broadnax is in at fullback. Spencer shifts to the eye back position. That's First loop. and goal at the two now. There is Sleister handing off to Spencer. Touchdown off left tackle. Touchdown by Tim Spencer and penalties just destroyed Illinois. He blew it in right behind Scotty Burris and uh, Broadnax, Von Broadnax, the freshman fullback leading the way. Timmy Spencer took it in. And you're right, 72 yards in seven plays. Watch the replay on it here. That's just power football there, uh, which the Buckeyes really haven't shown a, a great propensity for so far. You see Vladi warming up his leg. 72 yards in seven plays, and Spencer, of course, the last two. Well, Illinois appeared to lose their composure on that series of plays, and uh, they just absolutely gave Ohio State a touchdown. Anakievsky in to try the extra point. Oris is holding. Kievsky and it's good. With 10 minutes and 55 seconds left in this football game, it's Ohio State 49, Illinois 35. Now we have 84 points scored in this football game and 10.55 left, so don't go away. Can't you see this one bouncing around the country? And, you know, at one time it was uh, 
35 to one time it was 28 to zip then it was 35 to 7 then it became 35 28 now the Buckeyes are in control 49 35 but Mark there's still 10 55 to play in this ball game how well do you see in the dark Kate? <laughs> I got the flashlight out 84 points scored we have 10 minutes and 55 seconds left and Illinois is just itching to get that football well, they're going to get it in a hurry because Atha will be kicking off. A couple of really horrendous penalties on the Illini. One after a play was stopped on a third down play, well short of the first down. Ohio State would have had to give up the football, and Illinois was called for a roughness. There is the approach by Atha. There's the kick. It goes right down the center of the field, and it hit the... Ball bounced up and hit the crossbar. Listen to this one, Marv. <laughs> Purdue has just informed everybody that uh, Mark Herman had set the Big Ten passing record with 439 yards, and then they found out what Mike uh, or what David Wilson had done here with his 440 some. So they put Herman back in the ball game. <laughs> Say, Art may be close to that, you know. <laughs> no, he's not. Well, he's just 400. Running. Here we go. 446. All right. There's a draw play to Curtis. Curtis gets away from a couple of tacklers. Pull down at the 21. Joe Curtis, the ball carrier. Glenn Cobb ultimately made the stop at the Illinois 22, a gain of two, second down and eight. That's one of those things you don't see much of in this ball game. A, a run. What's a run? You get it in hose. Garden hose. Second down and eight. Split back formation. Wilson to pass. Rushes on. Pass is complete, however. Glenn Cobb makes the tackle. Mike Martin caught the ball. And that time, Ohio State got to Wilson. Chris Ream got in there, and that's the first time that they've even come close to rushing him. Now you see Earl pacing the sidelines again. He's uh, That might be the Bible he's got in his hand. The line of scrimmage, the 26-yard line. Wilson, straight back to pass. Throws it in the flat. Caught by Curtis. First down, Illinois. Curtis did an out cut right at the 31. He knew exactly where he had to go to get the first down. Caught the ball and then went out of bounds at the 31. I don't have the figures and should, but their third down conversion in uh, record has to be uh, exceptional because he comes up uh, third and uh, ten third and uh, six and uh, David Wilson just fulfills the contract folks There's a Wilson back to pass throws the bomb up field it is caught by Martin he got behind Skilling drops the ball it's loose scramble for it and I think Ohio State got the ball and were the Buckeyes lucky on that one? Ray Ellis has it, I believe. Skillings. Well, that isn't anything that the Illini did wrong. Ray Ellis indeed hugs the football. But watch this again. Now, here's the thing that David Wilson does not do much of. Look at the ball go. A great, great effort by Martin. And Vince Skilling stripped him of the football with his right arm. He gave him the right arm chop. Number 27, Ray Ellis, went in there and covered it. Watch it again. Now, watch how Martin beats our man deep. And now here comes Gorley up. No, too late, folks. Now watch the right-hand chop right there by Vince Skilling. 27, Ray Ellis comes up, cradles the football. The Buckeyes have it. Art Schleister rolls to the right, comes out to the 10, to the 15, tackled at the 15. Dan Griggis comes up to get him, number 92. So the Illini had moved it all the way down to the Ohio State eight-yard line only. They want to see it one more time, Marv. Look at him here. Look at him. Now watch the right-hand chop right there on the football by Vince Skellings, and that did it. Second and three. Donnelly in motion to the left. Murray's got a first down, breaks a tackle, breaks another one. Pull down at the 28. First down, Ohio State. First and 10, Ohio State at the Buckeye 
28-yard line. The score is Ohio State 49, Illinois 35. That's right, 49 to 35. Clayster options, finds a hole, goes to the 31 or 2. Ohio State wants to try to get a running attack going to use up the clock, but Illinois has defended so well against the run that the Buckeyes have not been able to do it. You're right, Cal Murray's carried the ball 14 times. He has 69 yards. That's 30 shy of 1,000 yards for the season. You take a look at Earl Bruce's back right there, and uh, if you can read backs, well, you know what he's thinking. Please end this game. Please for the pass. Goes the bomb upfield over the head of uh, Doug Don. Not by much, but just beyond his fingertips incomplete. Third and six. I wonder if there's enough passing for those 87,952 in this ball game. You see Art now a little upset with himself at not making that one. Third down and six at the Ohio State 32. Clock shows 752 remaining. We've already had 84 points scored. Placed to pass. Goes the screen. Caught by Murray at the 30, 35. Tackled right around the first yard, uh, first down yardage. Uh, now where they set it down, he's short. Going to put the ball down to 37 and a half yard yes. line, and that does not appear to be enough yardage. That's a yard short. They're going to have to give it up. It's seven minutes and 26 seconds to go, and the clock moving. And this crowd is buzzing, Marv. It is buzzing. Fourth down and one. Tom Orris will come in to kick. In case you wonder, Marv, the NCAA record for most yards passing is held by Mark Wilson, 571. There's plenty of time for David to get it. Another will. It'll be dark, but there's plenty of time. Good pass from center. Pretty good rush. Good rush, in fact. Fair catch is called for and made by Dentino. Or Zerbe, it is. How'd he get in there? Ah, <laughs> oh, the bench is in. Illinois gets it. First and ten at the orange and blue 26. <laughs> Suppose Illinois will run three straight quarterback sneaks, K. Well, you got to to run that clock down. Thank heavens the sun came out. If it was going to stay dark, we'd have never finished. Bentino to the right, Lopez to the left. Dave Wilson. Back to pass, throws it in the flat. It is caught by Thomas. Thomas eludes the tackler and goes out of bounds. I think he stepped out to 39. Well, they ran right out of the arms of Vince Gillings, Keith Ferguson, and Rod Gorley. Absolutely ran right out of their arms. Three Buckeyes appeared to have that play absolutely stopped. See it again on this little swing pass. Watch it go right between them there. Cuts them right through, and now he puts his foot on the white. There at the 40, at the 39, but that's 13 yards. First and ten, Illini, line of scrimmage, the Illinois 39. Back to pass is Wilson over the middle, caught by Bakey, and Bakey is tackled at the 40. And they are just riddling the Ohio State defense. Keith Ferguson got in on him then and hits him, but it's a little bit too late. He doesn't have his arms up in the air, and you think that Wilson didn't find his man? Across the midfield, down to the Buckeye 39. From 39 to 39. And there's another flag down. Personal foul against the Buckeyes. Well, this is very careless, but it's also just utter frustration. I think I think Illinois has just frustrated Ohio State to the limit. They certainly have. Buckeye secondary is just getting taken apart. And they say the personal foul was on number 65, Keith Ferguson, but this puts them in business. Six minutes and a half to play. They're down on the Buckeye 24. Martin to the left, Benson to the right for the Illini. First and 10 at the Buckeye 25 now. Wilson, the pass, and is tackled by Nick Miller. Where's Nick Miller been? He gets a battlefield promotion for that. Nick Miller, who is in at middle guard, 
broke through and tackled Wilson, and the crowd goes wild. Watch him come nicely through here now. Really, he had plenty of time. Uh, he could, apparently, the Buckeyes had some pretty good coverage because Nick sacks it back on the 34, 10 yards. Second down and 20 now for the Illini. Back at the Illinois 34. Five minutes and 45 seconds remain. Wilson to pass. Has the time. Throws the bomb upfield. May it open. And he caught it at the six-yard line over Skilling. Cam Benson got behind Skillings and caught the ball. He certainly did. From the 34. Look how dro he drops clear back to the 45. Rifles the thing down there right over Vince Skillings. And Skillings has been beaten badly very much in this ball game. Look at the chuck there. And he's wide open. And boy, does Wilson put the ball in there. He's down to the six. Just a superbly thrown ball by David Wilson. First and goal at the six. Wilson, and a flag is down. Probably delay of game, but let's wait and see. Illinois is very, very slow in getting their plays underway. And for no particular reason, because I don't quite understand the illegal motion there. Going to call a an illegal procedure violation against the Illini. You'd think Illinois would be so eager to get their plays underway, they could hardly wait. Illegal procedure called against the Illini. Now move them back to the 11, so it is first and goal at the 11. Five minutes, 36 seconds remain. 49 to 35. Ohio State winning. Wilson, back to pass, throws it upfield, incomplete, interference called on Ohio State. Gorley tripped Rod Gorley tripped the receiver, and, and he did. No way was he going to get it. Bakey was down there, and he tripped him, and uh, the rush was on. They did have a little heat on him. Watch it here. Pretty good little rush on him now, but he still has plenty of time to throw. I don't think he was going to get the ball, but we'll never know because he was tripped, and it becomes a first down at the five. So interference called on Ohio State, no doubt about that. Gorley did, and the Illini get it first and goal now at the four. The thing that makes that so costly, now the Illini get a first down. That's true. It would have been second and 11. There is Curtis heading into the middle, and there's no place to go. Didn't gain an inch. Seems like a gross waste of time for them to try to run when this guy, David Wilson, can throw it at will. Or at Bake Bakey or at Martin or at anybody who wants to. Look at the Illini coaching staff on the sidelines, anxious. They want that touchdown so they can try the onside kick. The clock is ticking. It's five minutes and moving. Second down and goal, still at the four. Wilson, back to pass, spots Dentino, it is incomplete. Interference. Interference called on, Gore, on Skillings, and it was. That's true, and he's protesting, and uh, we'll get half the distance again, I imagine. Well, Ohio State's secondary has just lost their poise. Watch it totally. again. He's just getting beat, that's all. They're getting beat to death like a rug. And this man isn't that shifty, but... Uh, Oh, I think he interfered. Oh, sure. Interference called on Skillings, and now Illinois gets a first down at the one-yard line. Just for orderliness, though, they're going to pass so they don't take so much time. The clock is now stopped at 447. Illinois lines up in an eye. Thomas is the short man. There is Curtis. Bolts into the right side. Don't think he got it. Big pile up there at about the one foot line. Keith Ferguson stopped the play. Both arms in a bear hug around him. A fine play by Keith Ferguson, who was out for a while with a, what appeared to be an injured foot. Ball is, oh, just inches short of the goal line. Clock running, four minutes and uh, 20 seconds left. Second down for the Illini. There is Curtis trying it again, didn't get it. I don't believe. He only needed inches to go, but well, then he lost, that he I had believe. 
Look at the Illini sidelines. The ball is again just oh perhaps six inches short of the goal line. You notice Curtis or, uh, Wilson rushes over to the sidelines on that one quickly to get the next call. Clock is running down now. Three minutes and uh, 42 seconds left. They're going to get caught for too much time on this, and they can't get set. Illinois out of the huddle. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, Illinois oh, jump. And it, contact is made. It appeared Illinois was offside, but let's see. Six, 65 and 76, I think, both jumped. Left side of the Illinois line. Left Marty tackle Fiennes. and left guard. Marty Phoenix. And does that one hurt? Well, yeah. Illinois is penalized back to just beyond, about six inches beyond the five-yard line. That was about a four-and-a-half-yard penalty, I believe, because the ball's now on right on the five. Tim Johnson points out this gives Illinois more room to pass. Mike, Mike White was over there yelling something, trying to hand signal. I thought it was a timeout, but maybe a... Just another pass play. Third and goal at the five now. Wilson is going to pass. Throws it. Incomplete, and he had a man open. Chirac. Well, it's still only third. Uh, oh, it's fourth down now. And the only reason that wasn't a touchdown was it was overthrown. <laughs> That's right. Fourth and goal at the five-yard line. Wilson has 576 yards passing, a new NCAA record, Mark. Wilson rolling left, has time, throws one, it is intercepted in the end zone. Vince well, tell me why he ran it out. Explain why he ran that ball out of the end zone on fourth down. I think Ohio State has just totally lost their composure. There it is on the replay now. He doesn't have anybody to throw to, and he is being hurried right considerably. Instead of knocking the ball down or downing it, he runs it out to the, what, two, one and a half with three minutes and six seconds. So the Buckeyes have stopped an Illinois drive, although an Illinois penalty had something to do with it. First and goal at about the two. There is Murray coming up the middle to the four and a half yard line. 49 to 35, a capacity crowd, 87,952 fans looking on in almost total disbelief. Marv, uh, David Wilson has 576 yards. That, of course, is an NCAA record. It's a Big Ten record. He's 39 out of 60 today for 576 and five touchdowns. 39 of 60. Schleister hands off to Spencer. Spencer gets to the seven. Clock showing two minutes and 23 yeah. seconds left. 49 Ohio State, 35 Illinois. What a fine comeback Illinois has made the second half. Jim Barry thinks this is a record for longevity of a game. He's probably right. We got all kinds of records today. This game's brought with records. And Ohio State's going to call a timeout. They let the clock run down to two minutes and two seconds and then call time. Art Schleister coming over to the near sideline. There you see Earl Bruce. <laughs> Not exactly jovial. Rather grim. grim this game is a frightmare, I'll tell you. Well, the Buckeye offense sure deserves the world of credit today because had they not been tremendously sharp, you shudder to think of what this would have been because uh, Illinois, and give them credit, Illinois really kept their poise. They were down 35-7 to at one time. We've had 152 plays in the game, 1,135 yards. The Illini have had 14 more plays than the Buckeyes. Rocky Johnston, our statistician, has worn out three pencils today trying to keep up with this. And still the crowd's uh, here. Very few are, well, they're beginning to file out now, but basically they're all on their feet, I'll tell you that. They're hungry, Kate. Yeah, they are hungry. Donnelly, there is 
Fleister rolling out to the right. Going to run with it. Is in trouble. Trapped in the back at the five. Now the Buckeyes will have to kick. Rick George is the man that got him. Clock running. 145 left. Illinois is letting the clock run. Rather surprisingly. And it's 137 and cooking. So Ohio State winning its eighth game of the season, but believe me, it has not been easy. Nine yards deep in the end zone is Tom Horace, nine and a half yards deep. Gets a good pass from center. The rush is on. Horace just does get the kick away. Down goes Horace. The kick goes all the way back to the Illinois 44, and a stop is made. What a kick by Horace. Now he's 51 yards questioning the official a little bit. This is the game to do it. The officials have really had a nightmare today, I'll tell you. I don't envy them at all. It's been a fierce game for them to officiate. 49-yard Line of scrimmage is the Illinois 46-yard line. A minute 12 left. Dave Wilson trying his 61st pass of the afternoon. Completes it to Martin up the middle at the Ohio State 37-yard line. You had surprise in your voice when you said he completes it. You know, I've said that so often. <laughs> That's a 19-yarder. First and 10 line eye at the Ohio State 37. Here's the 62nd pass. Wilson throwing. Caught by Benson at the 22. Ellis is there, but too late. Incomplete. I mean complete. Now the Illini call time to stop the clock at 55 seconds. Kate, I broadcast the game with Benners and the game with Brody and the game with Hickson, <laughs> and I'm not at all sure that we've seen a better passing exhibition than David Wilson. You know, I think David ought to forget this court fight he's got right now and just go directly to the pros next year, not pass go or collect $200 or anything. Well, Ohio State will sure first and second and third that motion. It is easy, however, to lose sight of the fact that with all this yardage, with all these completions, with all these really remarkable plays, Ohio State is winning 49 to 35. He's now 42 of 63 unofficially for 609 yards. That's not going to be far off. Wilson to pass. Throws it. It is incomplete to Wilson or to Martin, and that ball was right on the money. And Martin thought he was interfered with, and there were two Buckeyes defending there. Martin found the seam between them, and Wilson got the ball there. Look at Martin jog off the field. I'll tell you, he's played quite a ball game today. Yes, he has. Little Mike Martin. to the right, Lopez to the left of the Illini, 48 seconds remaining. Wilson to pass, throws it, batted down That's Ray. by Ray Ellis. Lopez almost caught a touchdown pass and a dandy defensive play by Ray Ellis saved it. Good timing there by the defensive move by Ray Ellis. And that was the 64th pass. There's 43 seconds left. He's got time for maybe 12 or 13 more. 43 seconds left. Third down and 10. The ball's the Ohio State 21. Wilson to pass. Throws it in the flat. Caught by Thomas. 20, 15, 10. Out of bounds. First down Illini. Fox stops. Ran right out of the arms of Rod Gorley on that one before Vince Skillings wrapped him up. We'll take another look. No place to throw deep. Goes to his flare man. He should be stopped short of the first down. Was not. Right out of Gorley's arms. Vince gets him out of bounds at the 10. That's an 11-yard gain. 35 seconds left. The ball's at the Buckeye 10. 
49 to 35, Illinois trailing by 14 points. But don't go away. Wilson. Throwing incomplete. Fakey had it go in and out of his arms incomplete. Murphy almost had it. Right. Bob Murphy was right there and nearly picked that off. It is second down and 10 with 31 seconds left. And seriously, it is getting dark. All that kept Illinois from scoring. Watch it again. Drops deep. Fires it smoothly. Right off of the thing. I think he could have had that, Mar. But the ball was beautifully thrown. It would have taken a fine catch, but it does stop the clock 26 seconds. Let me quickly remind you that as uh, great a game as David Wilson is having, 42 out of 67, 624 yards, five touchdowns. Junior Arthur Sleister of Ohio State has not been bad. 21 times he's thrown it, 18 times he's connected, 269 yards and four touchdowns. A mere pittance alongside of Wilson, but Art's on the winning side. This yes. has been a dazzling day, Marv. I don't remember ever seeing a game this electrifying in the air. 26 seconds remain. Probably time for 10 more plays. Well, you know, when Benners and Meredith and those dudes from SMU came up here, they did all the uh, throwing. The Buckeyes pretty much stayed to the ground and tried to defend in one thing or another. This game has been virtually defenseless. Sleister has really been absolutely superb today, yet they will be talking about Wilson because of the incredible number of passes he has thrown. Well, he goes in the books, and certainly you talk about that. Third down and 10. Wilson. Throws the pass, it is incomplete interference called on Ray Ellis in the end zone, and that was a good call, but or wait a minute. Ray's applauding it now. That might be the other way. I don't know, Ray was applauding it. You don't usually applaud yourself when you well, get it. It's against Ellis, isn't it? It is, yes. Mm -hmm. That puts the penalties on the Buckeyes up over 100. Face guarding called against Ohio State. Penalty yardage in this game is going to be unbelievable. Watch it again on the replay. He just throws that ball up for grabs, and I guess this is what they call face guarding on Ray, and so it's a first down on the one. First and goal for the Illini at the one with 21 seconds left. Wilson on a quarterback sneak doesn't get it. Whistle blows. Let's see. Fox is stopped at 15 seconds. Illinois calls timeout. I don't think Wilson got it. They're unpiling in there. They're going to set the ball down oh, about six inches short of a touchdown. So oh, here we go again. 15 seconds left. Second and goal at the six-inch line. Look at the referee or the umpire's feet there. Cradled around the football. 15 seconds to go. The fans are leaving. The game is apparently secure for the Buckeyes, but... Wilson has passed the five, all five touchdowns. Now is he going to run for the uh, six or will he try to throw? He's over there huddling right now with Mike White, who I'm sure is told him, son, you have had yourself some kind of an afternoon. And I'm sure all 87,592 fans here, the 76th straight sellout, appreciate that too, Mar, much as you and I do. Oh, no doubt about it. This has just been a incredible offensive show. I've had fun. I'm not sure that the, either defensive team has had any fun today. But boy, the offensive teams have, and the people who like the high score and the home runs, they're getting it. Oh, if you like defense, you're in the coronary care unit. <laughs> Second down at the six-inch line. Wilson dropping back to pass, throws oh, it, caught, oh, touchdown! Wide open. Foster. Is Greg Foster wide open. 
and now <laughs> it is 49 to 41. Oh, watch the replay. This is so easy, it just looks simple. Why didn't we do it when we were down on the one-yard line? Foster hugs the ball. That's his sixth touchdown pass of the ball game. Whoops, he do. 49 to 41, 11 seconds left. My mathematics are correct, and they're probably not by now. That's got to be 90 points. And now Bass going for the 91st one. It is set down. Bass kicks it. It's high. It's good. 49 to 42. Ohio State leads with 11 seconds left, and here will come the onside kick. 54 yards then in 10 plays. The sixth touchdown pass of the game for David Wilson, who has now taken the former record of Mark Wilson clear out of sight. 67 passes is the most in anybody's memory. It's just, uh, it's mind-boggling. 43 out of 67. Katie, you suppose Purdue has... Uh, Declared an overtime and is using Herman in the fifth corner over there. Well, Bass will be kicking for the Illini. Ohio State, of course, expecting an onside kick. Nine men are up in the first two restraining lines. Now, you must line up at least 10 yards away. And that would be beyond the 50 as far as Ohio State is concerned. There are five men at that line and then four immediately behind them. Look at all the Illini players in the sidelines lining up to, to observe this. 11 seconds left if they get the football. That's time for at least 10 passes by Wilson. 49 to 42. <laughs> and darkness settles in on Ohio State. 43 out of 66. 66 passes, is that the number? 67. 67. 88 for the ball game. Look at the football as they set it up for some kind of a squirrel, squirrely kick. The ball is uh, lying flat on the field. Bass will be approaching it from an angle. Maybe a way. There's the kick. He tries an onsider. It's fielded by Ohio State. Uh, Bob Murphy, and Murphy downs it immediately. Murphy played that very well. Didn't he? He did indeed. Looks like Davy Concepcion on that. Right. Or Gary Templeton. Oh, I'll take that. Are you St. Louis Cardinal diehards? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm one. So the Buckeyes will get it first and 10 at the 42 and a half yard line with nine seconds remaining as Bob Murphy covered that onside kick perfectly. Imagine scoring 42 points, Marvin, losing. We may see that you know, happen they, in nine seconds. Here. Illinois has only scored 41 points in the last eight games with Ohio. Fleischer gets the ball and just falls down as the clock runs down. Two seconds, one second, that's it. The football game is over. And in an incredible offensive display, Ohio State has defeated Illinois 49 to 42. And so the Ohio State Buckeyes have won their eighth victory of the season against one loss. Ohio State is now 6-0 in Big Ten play. Illinois' record drops to 3-6-1.